All right, here we go. The mighty return of TK Kirkland. Yes, sir, the flag. That's right. That's flag, right. My man. That's right. That's, That's right. right. You know, you were on here a few months ago, but this is the first one of 2024. Absolutely, absolutely sir. We had to do it. We had, we to, do had it. to do it. Had to do it. Had to do it. And listen, we can't start this interview off without talking about Cat Williams yes. doing the equivalent of hit him up <laughs> yes. in an yes. interview. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, on Club Shay Shay. He went at everybody. Now, you've known Cat forever. For a long time. Okay. Like, how long ago did you meet Cat? I met Cat maybe 15 years ago. 15 years ago? Yeah. Easy okay. 15. Easy 15. Okay. Was he just starting off doing comedy back then? I don't know. I, I, I don't know him, know him well. I see him in passing because I, I'm in my own lane, so to yeah. speak. So when I see the new comics come on, I see them doing their thing, and Cat just skyrocketed to success, but you always um, show respect and clout. I, I do that for all comics, but he's just really had his own lane, he had his own niche, and mm -hmm. um, when you're a true competitor and you know that person doesn't intimidate you, doesn't make you feel like a hater. You always tip your hat off of mm. because you, when you, just when you don't think there's another way for success, you see someone do, do something and you go, wow, there is another way. Yeah. And that's why you have to applaud him. Um, regardless of what people think of him, he has found the way in this new era yeah, to skyrocket again to fame, which is awesome. Right, because he went at everyone, everyone. in comedy. Yes. From Kevin Hart to Cedric the Entertainer to Ludacris mm -hmm. to Ricky Smiley to Ice Cube to Tiffany Haddish. And a lot of other people got mentioned along the way. Right, you never right. got mentioned. I never got mentioned. Right, but the two of you aren't really. I think it's the respect like thing, and yeah, I yeah. think it's a respect thing. Yeah, and I, I, I wouldn't talk about him in a negative way. Um, one of the things that I said about him recently, as 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 a fun, I'm a track star, and when he said that he could run the forty in uh, four 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 five, what I wanted to bring to the world was Deion Sanders when he was at the prime of his career. Could only could run a 4-1 in the 40 at 20-something years old <laughs> with shorts on and a jerry curl. <laughs> Cat said he could run that fast with uh, braids on, sweatpants, and run a 4-4-4-7. So I said, I want to put 20,000 on a race between me and Cat running the 40, and I bet I could beat him. Now, here's the joke about it now. I'm 63. I think Cat is 50. It ain't gonna be no blazing time. By the time we run it in the 40, I'll say we'll probably run five, eight, six, one in the 40, but we're going to the hospital afterwards. <laughs> well, there's a video of him actually running and he ran it in four, four, seven. Yeah, that's not a 40 yard dash. You gotta look, you gotta understand. Okay. Common, I mean, track. What's that, like a 20 yard dash? There's just... no way you could run a four, four in sweatpants at 50 years old. Then they have. Especially he's also very short, so his legs are, you know what I'm saying? Like usually, you know, the guys that are running really fast have long no, legs no, and they're built It doesn't matter. For... If you're fast, you're fast. Okay. If you're fast, you're fast. It has nothing to do with legs or... I, I, I ran with the best people in, in the world. I ran with Carl Lewis. I ran with... You ran with Carl Lewis? I ran with Carl Lewis out of Jersey. Man, another another little bit in the, the story of yes, T.K. Kirkland, the Forrest Gump of hip-hop. Carl Lewis <laughs> ran for Willingboro High School in, okay. in New Jersey. I ran for Snyder High School. Back from 1976 to 1979, New Jersey was the hottest high school track circuit in the world, in the world. Okay. Like we were all just that good. We had Butch Wolfuck who played for the Giants. Do you remember Butch Wolfuck? Slightly. Slightly. You, you remember Renato Skeets Nehemiah? That name sounds familiar. Yeah, also. he was the hurdler. He went to Olympics. Oh, okay. Yeah. All of us came from Jersey. Okay. All of us. Butch Wolfuck from West Bloomfield, Westfield, New Jersey. Um, Renato Skeets Nehemiah from Scotch Plains. Carl Lewis and his sister from Willingboro. 
And mm. oh man, no, but Carl Lewis won the won the gold medal. Won the gold medal like four or five times. Yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah he's a, he was. A, I ran with these guys. Okay. Yeah, I ran with these guys. Everybody know Kirk Lewis. Right. And Cat Williams is not running a four four. Nah. And it's not. I'm not hating. I'm just telling the truth. He okay. ain't running that. Okay. He ain't running that. Well, he went at a ton of people. Yes. Now he went at Kevin Hart. Yes. Uh, and the two of them kind of had a a thing now for a while. Right. Because right. I went back to some of my old footage and, you know, he yeah. talked about They've Kevin been going back at in it. 2013. Mm -hmm. He called him an industry plant. Right. He said that he already had movies lined up by the mm -hmm. time he moved to L.A. No one's ever seen him on the comedy circuit. And he was just planted like that. Now, now I don't even really know what that means. That, that Here's the thing about stories. And that's why it's so interesting because we're talking about a world that doesn't know about Hollywood. So if you have someone that can talk convincingly and, I, I, and that's a great speaker, they have the ability to convince you what they want you to believe. Mm. There is no such thing as an industry plan. No. That ain't happening. Right. You have to actually put hard work into this business. Yeah. And you have to be very, very lucky, like hitting the lottery. Mm. because um, there are a lot of great stand-up comedians, a lot, but no one's never getting the opportunity. When I do panels of people who want to get into um, Hollywood, and they say, TK, how can I make it? I truly convince people to go the other direction. Me too. Because you don't, you don't want to be in Hollywood, yeah. they, especially for African-Americans. And let me tell the fans why. If, you, if I told everybody around the world right now to do a research paper on black actors and black actresses in Hollywood, you will come back with a horrific story of disappointment and depression. It's just the way the world is. Mm -hmm. we, we are basically swimming against the current in this business. So when one makes it, instead of the other person congratulating them, we live in the world now because we have social media, we attack a person that's on top. And the goal is, if someone is doing better than you, you salute them, you praise them, because when Michael Williams started comedy, Robin Harris, in 1985, we wasn't even in the improvs at that time. That's why we had to create our own comedy clubs. And to see the comedians go from $20 a show, $20 now, yeah. I'm gonna repeat this, $20 we was getting in 1985. Mm -hmm to what people are doing now. Oh yeah, I just had D.L. Hughley on here. Yes. And he was talking about how he used to have beef with Eddie Griffin. Yes. But the two of them are really close friends now. Yes. And he said that out of the blue, Eddie just threw him a gig for 100,000. You know, me and Eddie Griffin had a huge fight years ago. Really? Over what? It was a long time ago. We got, it was heated. It was a horrible, horrible fight. Okay. Was it a fist fight? Yes. Really? A fist fight. Okay. He's one of my dearest friends in comedy. Yeah, I I've been to his house in Vegas. That's where I interviewed him. Yeah. 30 years ago. 25, 30 years ago. We just played a gig together where Eddie got me a hundred grand for playing a gig. Wow. Okay. On a Friday, just cause on some humbug stuff. Huh. Me saying Felipe Esparza, carry on. I could never have imagined 25 years ago that we would ever be at this place. He calls and wishes me uh uh Merry Christmas, happy birthday. I called him. Congratulations. We are friends. Even though we had this horrible, like we hated each other. Absolutely. I saw this that. Is, this is, you know, right. these are the type of people I mess with these days exactly. that are getting $100,000 gigs. Right. Yep. You know what That's I mean? That's true. That's true. Yeah. And people work hard, man. And, and people really have to stop being persuaded and believing everything that they hear because the goal in life is what I do is just try to give people, the reason why I, I wanted to take this interview with you this time too, I like to give people another way of seeing things. Like you, you got this way, but just for a minute, for a minute, take time to look at it this way. There's no such thing as an in industry plan. There's nobody in this, no African American, not even Will Smith, not even Eddie Murphy, has been given 50 million or more four or five times. You can't tell me that Eddie got um, bent over. Now, Will Smith, I don't know, you know, but you can't tell me that. You can't tell me Byron Allen, who's a billionaire, who is a very smart, smart man, him and his mom, 
These are people who really put in work in this game that really worked hard in this business. Unfortunately, there's no African, black African that can green line a movie in Hollywood. That's something I would like to see that someone to have that kind of power that they could have a green light to green light a movie. Then you have the situation with Taraji Henderson. I saw your thing. Right, yeah. And I'm going viral over over this yeah. right now. So let, let's talk about it. This is a good tangent right yeah. now. Let's and, talk about and, it. So so let, let me let me just go ahead, let okay. me let me just um get everyone up to speed. Yes. So I've done a few interviews where I've talked about Taraji B. Henson. I did it with Lunell and also most recently with Math Hoffa. Yes. The Math Hoffa clip started to go viral. Okay. And what I said was this. First of all, let, let me just kind of state for the for the record. Okay. I love Taraji P. Henson yes. as an actress. Yes. I've seen She's phenomenal. Phenomenal at what she does. Yes. I've watched, I'm sure, every movie she's done. Yes. If not every movie, then ninety eight percent of all the yes. movies she's done. And every movie that she's been in, she's always killed it. Yes. From Baby Boy to Benjamin Button to her TV show with Empire to Hidden Figures, everything. Phenomenal job every single time. If it was up to me, she would be a leading actress right. and she'd be getting paid top dollar. Right. But unfortunately, it's not up to me. Right. It comes down to the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, and how many people that you bring in. And unfortunately, Taraji's more of a um, a co-star as opposed, you know, a, 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 what do you call it? Supporting actress as opposed mm -hmm. to a leading actress. Her okay. leading actress roles have not blown up in terms of the movies where she was the lead. Right. Like Proud Mary and so right. forth. So what I said was, I understand she's complaining and she was crying that her wages were lower than she wanted, and she even wanted to leave the business at one point. And I said, well, look, number one, as established and loved as she is, why is she not making her own films? Why is she not doing her own production? Everyone in the industry will work with her for nothing. All the biggest stars will do it off the relationship. So true. All the best writers will work with her. All the best directors will say, oh, yeah, I'll do a project with you. Absolutely. She could get investors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She could partner up with people where she controls the budgets. I totally agree. She could pay herself what she wants to pay herself. Right. It's up to her. And as time goes on, you see the Tyler Perrys of the world who say, okay, we're not going to play this game anymore. We're not going to complain that we should just do it ourselves. And you could do movies for lower budgets and work their way up. Yes, you're not going to do a Marvel movie on your own, but you could do a lot of great films that will have bidding wars over them once you complete them Absolutely. on your own. And what I also said, and this is the part that started to go a little bit viral, is Taraji P. Henson is worth $12 million and lives in a $6 million house. And ultimately, and I'm speaking from my own experience as well, people don't want to hear millionaires complaining about money. Okay. And now everyone's in an uproar over right. this. Right. I think no, there's nothing you said was wrong there. Thank you. There's nothing you said that was wrong there. Thank you. The thing that um, Taraji, to me, would have to do is get a young team around her. Yeah. You have to get a young team because if she should be worth more than what she's talking about, right? I agree. Two. But ultimately... You you get what you negotiate. You get, I was just going to say that. You get you what you negotiate. You take the jobs that you decide to do. You're an yes. independent contractor. You're not working as an employee for any of these right. companies. But and, but here's the play that I said once. You're a businessman. We're all in this room with businessmen. When you hear a budget of $167 million, that's what was um, um, Benjamin Button that was the budget, 167 million. Mm -hmm. And you got 0.01% of the budget. I mean, you're the co-star. Something's not right. So let's let's take Hollywood out now and just talk about people. Yeah. Whoever her agency is, and I don't know who represents her, so I don't want nobody trying to sue me. Whoever is her agent, to me, robbed her. Because Vlad. If you was representing the artist and you knew that the budget was 167 million, they said, Vlad, we could only give your guy 150,000, but your guy is the co-star. Mm -hmm. Your guy is the glue to the movie. Yeah. You ain't doing it. Right. So here's my point. Whoever her agent was, they bullshitted her. They said, listen, take this 150,000. You about to do Brad Pitt. This is gonna escalate your career. Right. Just take this low amount of money, 
do it and you're going to become a star. Well, and I'm sure she made millions of dollars off of doing a movie yes, with Brad Pitt but after the fact. But my point is this. She, but she could have said that's not enough money. She could have said that's not enough money. Because even an agent, Vlad. Yes. Who, I'm talking about a real agent who knows there's a $167 million budget yeah. will say, I'm not going back to my client. More money. That. Or or how about we just say no money and you give us points off the project. Exactly. Right. So somebody's lying somewhere there. Right. Because, for example, I interviewed Jason Weaver. Yes. Right? He sang all the the young Simba lines from The Lion King. Right? Yes. Disney movie. So what his mother did. Right. Th this story here that you already know. They offered him, like I think, like a million dollars or something. She turned it down and said, I want a percentage of the film. Yep. And his part was so perfect for that movie that Disney, although they'd never done that before, they said, okay, fine, yep. we'll give it to you. And he still makes royalties to this, to this day, day off of that because his mother said, no, we're going to negotiate or else we're not going to sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. You'll have to find another Simba to sing this. Right. When they gave you the first offer. Yeah. With no, no ro royalties at all. Yeah. Was it a huge check? Oh, yeah. It was like, I remember it was like $2 million. What? Yeah. They offered you a $2 million check to sing the parts in The Lion King. Yep. Not even do the voice yet. Just do the singing parts. Just sing it. $2 million. Yeah, because they were on it like- They were cutting checks like that, huh? Well, you got to remember, they're coming off of- well, I guess you're the main character. Yeah, and then they're coming off of Beauty and the Beast. Mm. They're coming off of Aladdin. You know what I'm saying? Like Disney, Disney, man. Disney had bread. Disney just would write a blank check, huh? They'll write it, and and that was the <laughs> thing that struck my mom. She was like, "Cause the the agent called our agent called and was like, Kitty, they offered Jason this, and we were all like, Holy shit, are you sick? I mean, you know, that amount of money to average middle class family in Chicago in the early '90s. That, I mean, that's something. But my, immediately, my mom goes, Wait a minute. After the excitement, the initial excitement wore off, she's like, wait a minute. Okay, if they're willing to do that, okay, that's just a, so that's it. That's all he'll ever get for like the remainder of his life. They were like, that's it. He takes the money. That's it. She was like, no, nah, let's negotiate royalty. And Taraji, I think in that role of Benjamin Button was the perfect person perfect. for that role. Absolutely. I think if she had negotiated more, she could have gotten more. I totally agree. But at the end of the day, she chose to sign that contract, yeah. and she and that's got crazy that money. To me, Vlad, but I, to me, what? Well, the, Taraji been in the business too long. Yeah, like what thirty years to or something? get played like that. That is an agent actress discussion that someone bribed her. To me, I'm not saying I'm right, ladies and gentlemen. To me, to get played like that, and it's sad. And. We have to start going back to where people start stop telling their business. Hmm. This is getting out of hand about such and such made 400 something million. So and so got a 10 year contract like, because that puts a target on your back. Yeah. It's a target on your back. Yeah. And, and look, at the end of the day, you, you make choices in this life. Yes. Okay, especially in entertainment. Do you want the big look for less money? Or do you want a lower look for all the money? Mm -hmm. I had to decide early on. You know, I started doing documentaries. They were on Netflix and BET, but there was no money in it. Right. And I said, okay, that's okay. Let me, I'm not going to get the big look. I'm not, you know, although it was nice to do American Gangster and it was a big look and it was, you know, got nominated for awards and everything else like that. The money was very little. I had no ownership. Mm -hmm. I love the final product, but ultimately I knew that over time it was not a good business move. Right. So I went independent. I shot all my own content. I owned all my own content. It took me 15 years. And now I live in the same neighborhood as... All these big celebrities, Absolutely. you know, Dio yeah. Hughley lives down the street. Right. John Sally lives down the street. These are all mega celebrities yep. with multiple championship rings mm -hmm. and TV shows and giant specials. And I just went independent. And that's what I did with my career. Yeah, exactly. See, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, Vlad. I couldn't wait for someone to tell me I was booked. I couldn't wait for someone to tell me this is how much you're going to make. That just didn't sit right to me. Me too. 
It's a hard business. And as a DJ, I went through that. Yeah. Waiting to get booked. Right. That's a hard life. It's a hard life. Because sometimes you're, someone, like, you're cold at certain times. Yeah. And so yeah. If somebody doesn't, if, if the guy who's booking you don't like you, and that's all who you know, yep. you are done. Oh, that happened to me in New York. I lost my main booking. I had to go DJ in strip clubs. You know, just to get by. Man. Not as fun as you might think right. when it's not a popping strip club. It's it's miserable work. Yes. You know, DJing and just calling bubbles to the stage. Like, right. it, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. It, it's it's drudgery. But ultimately, you know, this turned into a big thing. There's like 5 million impressions. And, you know, the main thing that people are saying is that Vlad is white and should not be allowed to comment on black women's business. Hmm. Part of me almost says yes. <laughs> Part okay. of me. Watch Let's it. hear it. Let's hear it. But then the intelligence side kicks in. Yeah. You're a journalist. Yeah. I'm an interviewer. That's what the fuck you do. That's what I do. So that's what I mean by... I'm a lot older than you. And mm -hmm. I see social media has made the... Either they're dumb already... Or it has created a lack of common sense right. that I've seen in my lifetime that's embarrassing. Right. That's like telling black people they shouldn't be allowed to talk about white people's business. Exactly. Which is ignorant. It's, it's, ign it's an ignorant. That means it's, you shouldn't be allowed to talk about the president. Yes. No one in Congress. Vlad is you a know, journal. Just certain, certain black people in Congress are the only people you can make comment about all the blacks, all the whites and Asians and Latinos. Yes. You need to stay quiet. You're a journalist, Vlad. I will talk about whoever the hell I want yeah, to talk about. Yeah, you're a journalist, and I will the talk about and like, whoever and, the hell. I don't care how many comments and how many you losing cancellations. Nobody. Listen, I don't see you losing nobody. I'm good, man. Yeah, you good. I'm so, good. And I if have you do no lose someone, guests, you're gonna get more people. Someone else will come. Someone else. Someone will come. else will come. So, my, my business does not depend on any one individual. Nah. And you know I say when, when people used to tell me don't do Vlad, and I yeah. say they like they say TK don't do Vlad. I said one, I'm a grown man. You don't tell me who who should be my friend and who I should do interviews with. The thing that I want people to understand, again, you're a journalist. But let's stay before I, before I forget because you know I'm getting older. If you want to come to Hollywood, you have an iPhone now. They said Taraji made 150000 on Benjamin Button. You could put things together on your phone, post it on YouTube. Post it on different platforms and make that in a month. Yeah, absolutely. Make that in a month. People forget, because we were talking about Kevin Hart, is at one point, Kevin Hart was ice cold. Yes. Nobody cared about Kevin Hart. Soul Plane, oh, Cave yeah, and Went, definitely. Paper Soldiers. Yes. was a trash movie. No one was really rocking with Kevin, and he hit YouTube with the whole chocolate dropper thing yep. and started doing skits YouTube. and building and yep. building energy around his own content. Right, and then he started getting booked more, and then now look where he is. And that's but what he took it in his own hands on YouTube. Hands. Yep. But the thing is, is that what I noticed when I talked to a lot of these Hollywood, especially the older Hollywood people, mm -hmm. they want to do their job and get their check. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want to do anything in. on their own. That, and that's what's sad. Right. Remember Taraji was complaining or in the color purple, uh, she didn't have a driver because they gave her a rental car. She said, right. oh, this is this is unsafe. Right. I need a driver. But color purple isn't exactly a, a Marvel film. You know, I mean, they're trying to make well, I ends I think they meet. still said a job, but if, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't have the budget for, for that. For drivers. For right, for drivers yeah. and that. Because they said, we don't have to get drivers for everyone. We don't have to sign the budget. Yeah, yeah, they don't have the budget she made for a, that. She made a whole thing and about it. And that's because she did big movies but again you get what you negotiate right you could have said all this in the contract so i'm my question that everybody should be asking and me and you know this who's your representation right because if you if i was repping you yeah that's what you're getting yeah every day look i remember i just interviewed uh the ex-football player richard mendenhall okay he was a writer on ballers Oh, the I HBO didn't know that. show. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he was the one football, actual football player, ex football player that was actually in the writer's room and then started to become like a producer okay. and everything. I else like that like show that. too. Great show. Yeah. Went five seasons, right? And he said there was this one time where during the first season, 
he really wanted to sit down and talk to The Rock because The Rock was the star as well as, you know, one of the executive producers. Yes. And everyone's trying to keep his distance from him. He didn't want to be bothered, whatever else. But he just basically sat down with him and just bothered him. Right. He said, listen, I know you're busy, but I just want to get your advice. Right. And he asked The Rock, what is your secret to success? And The Rock said, one day he looked around at all his team, you know, his manager, agent, assistants, producers, whatever else, and said, all y'all ain't doing shit. <laughs> None of y'all have the same vision that I have. He fired all of them and got a brand new team and their theme was world domination. That's right. We're only doing projects that's gonna get us to world domination. Right. He told me a bit of his story, like um, having his first team and realizing when they weren't the right team. He said he, he looked up one day, he said, everybody in the room, he just, I just looked up and I fired their ass. He was like, people that didn't even work for me, I just fired them. He had the <laughs> wrong people around in the wrong team and started over, began to put his team together from scratch and their, and their motto and their goal, their aim. And look at his career domination. ever since then. I totally agree. He's doing, you know, big DC superhero films, mm -hmm. huge action movies. Yes. If he ran for president, he'd probably win. Yes, that's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. He's just too busy with all right. these hundreds of millions flowing through, mm -hmm. you know, through his bank accounts to do it. But that's the thing. The Rock could have been a B-list actor. Yes. It's not like he's a phenomenal actor. No, he's not. He's he's, just he's one dimensional. He's he's you know typecast. Yes. You know he's now older. He's not twenty something. You know there's lots of younger, better looking guys. Yes. But he is still dominating because he has, like you said, the right team behind him. Right. Taraji could have been that. I, I totally with the right agree. team. With the right, it's all about the yep. right team. I, I, I'm what you call the prodigy in my business. Mm -hmm. Yo, I sell out around the country, and I'm low key. I'm low key. Yeah. You, you're not gonna Google me and find out how much money I make. You're not gonna. None of that is out there because that's just the way I move. I'm old. Uh, I'm gonna be 64, Vlad. No, crazy, right? You about to be 65. No, I'm I'm 63 now. No, but I'm saying 65 is right around the corner. That's you, the official you senior citizen. That's how fast yeah. time goes. Yep. Well, you know, uh, Kevin Hart's ex-wife, Teray, is supposed to go on tour with Cat Williams. Saw that. <laughs> Cat is definitely putting his uh his petty wop hat on. <laughs> when I saw that, I said, either they don't get along. Or well, she feels there's nothing wrong with it, or she doesn't respect him. Because there's some things in life you don't go against the ops. It's all about family. Yeah. And maybe these, these, these you know, the young kids put a twist on things to make it seem like what their decision, the decision that they make is right. But people our age, we understand integrity, mm. loyalty, even though. Like I'm the, you're the mother of my children. Yeah. You know me and this person don't get along. Right, now you're going on tour with them. Yeah, that's that's so disrespectful. It's nasty. Yeah, that's, like I, yeah. now he's showing a good thing about it and he might tell her it might be okay, but as a man, you'll never look at her the same way again, never. Yeah. Will you look at her the same way again? And this is my opinion. Yep. Well. Another person on uh, Cat Williams' hit list was Cedric the Entertainer. Mm. And he went on a whole thing about how Cedric stole his joke. Yes. Now, you did an interview recently where uh, they showed you this one joke from actor uh, uh, Mashach Taylor. Mm -hmm. And then they showed the Cedric joke, and you said, okay, here's an example of Cedric actually stealing the joke right. from an unknown actor, yes. from some unknown bit. Mm -hmm. Now... We've talked about the whole stealing of jokes thing right. before. You yes. feel the whole thing is petty. I think it's petty. And because, again, people don't... The reason why the confusion in Hollywood is the way it is, because people don't really know this business. And let me... See, so I'm here to explain. There's a difference between stealing a joke and stealing someone's set. Yeah. See, your set is your whole show. Right. An hour, 45 minutes, hour, 30 minutes. That's your whole set. Yeah. A joke 
is less than maybe 30 seconds, maybe two minutes. Yeah. Sit. Right. So what I explain to people, if you had $1,000 and someone stole 100 would you throw away the other $900? Yeah. It's, it's petty. Right. And everyone's going through the same experience of life. They're seeing the same thing. They're seeing the you know, they're watching the same news. They're looking at the same social media. I do an interview. Someone else might ask the same question. Who cares? Who cares? Honestly, who cares? Who cares? Is You're not going to do my exact same interview. Right. And even if you did, who cares? Who cares? And that's what... For as long as we've been on the show, we talk about being a man. We talk about being a man. Mm -hmm. Not just physically, mentally. And when you see someone says... He's so mad, he's trying to be like me. When you see someone say he stole my joke, you make people think they stole your whole show. Yeah. It's not your whole show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not their whole show. Just a joke. It's just a joke. And don't get me wrong, if you do have a problem with someone taking something that you took the time to actually write, you gotta be a man. How is that? You call that person up, or when you finally see them, you don't fight, you don't, argue you like hey, yo let me talk to you you know i've been doing this particular joke this way and then you start saying well when did you start the joke yeah and then you go back to times right yeah. some people gonna lie when they said it but if someone took something from me i got so much material right i'm not worrying about it even when cat williams on his special who raised you who did who raised you half the world reached out to me so yeah. your cat is doing your stuff you're not tripping. I, 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 nah. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. It was He didn't do a whole set saying who raised you. Just threw that line in. He just threw that line in. Who cares? Who cares? I'm not tripping off that. Yeah. I mean, look, we talked about this last time. Carlos Mencia yes. was the first and I believe only major comedian that really got canceled over the accusations of stealing jokes. And I think it's because Joe Rogan actually confronted him on stage and it turned into this viral video and then it turned into a, a pylon. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's like, did he really steal the joke? He even told me about a fist fight he had with George Lopez. You know about uh, the story? No, I don't. Right, so there was a joke that both of them were using, it was about, oh, growing up in a poor Mexican family, your remote control was slapping your kid and telling him to go change the channel, right? Mm -hmm. And George Lopez was like, you know, they, they saw each other in the dressing room and he was like, yo, that's my joke. And he was like, look, you could actually see when I did the joke, it was in the 80s. You could even see by the video quality. Right. It wasn't widescreen. When George did the joke, it was widescreen. Mm -hmm. So in fact, he did the joke first. Right. And George was like, yeah, but I'm I'm older, more established, so you need to stop doing that shit. And then it turned into a fist fight. And George physically grabbed him and slammed him against the wall, and it turned into a whole thing over a damn joke. Over a joke. So that's a respect thing. Yeah, he doesn't respect Carlos. He doesn't respect them. Because yeah. ain't, no, ain't nobody putting a hand on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... Now, and to... See, I always put myself in another person's shoes. If a man or woman feels that person might have stole your material, and I'm here to tell every comic on the, in the world this, it's not worth going to fight. If you're no. talented, do you some more shit. Joke. New joke. If you're talented, I mean really talented, and you're working. Next joke. I'm gonna let that you can have that. Have it. You keep it. Yeah. You exactly. Keep it. Right, because you came up with the Who raised you? Well, then but before then was things things that make you go. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. I never talked about it right. until recently. And Arsenio, he had a bit on his show called Things That Make You Go. Hmm. Things that make you go. Have you ever hmm. been on Arsenio's? I've Arsenio's never been show? on Arsenio. Okay. And I know for a fact they got that from my show. Yeah. I was the first one to start, do, it was, I never had a name for it. It was just questions, I called it. Mm -hmm. And it goes, why are Lucky Charms so magically delicious? And where's the honeycomb hideout? But there's a, a track record of value from that joke. Right. Because it goes to his show, Arsenio. Then it goes to the group 
CNC Music Factory I that wrote that a song. song. It was a hit single. It was a hit single. Yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Yeah. Did a commercial. They showed the cheese melted. And in the background, you heard the woman's voice. Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. That one time, did I walk around? Did I complain? I saw it. I ain't trip. I ain't yeah. trip. Hey, man. I, I, I just, and, and, Blair, and, and, and we have to speak for the, not petty. But most of the people in this business is about their egos. And they take this thing too seriously. <laughs> and I want the world to know you're really not famous. Just few people know you. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 you're not famous, man. And to any comic in this country and the world, until you become bigger than Eddie Murphy, you're not a rock star. Yeah. I mean, you got Cat Williams, right? You got Kevin Hart, you got Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy is here. And Overall, I, yes. I seen it with my own yes. eyes. That man is on a whole nother level. I seen it with my own eyes. I hung with them for months. Seen it with my own eyes. He was something that cannot be explained during the, during the 80s and 90s. Un. Believable. I remember when they had Beverly Hills Cop 48 Hours. I know you got comedy shows at the lines around the corner. Eddie Murphy had lines that was unreal. Well, yeah. And, and all you have to say to support what you're saying is think about how many classic movies Eddie has under his belt. Yes. Trading Places, 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop. Coming Cop, to America. Coming to America, Boomerang. Uh, and all those movies are not hits. Let's be clear. They're well, not hits. But what Eddie But they're had, classic. They're, they're classic classes. films, right? Yes. But what I want to say is, how many classic movies does Kevin Hart have under his belt as a lead actor? Now, I'm going to explain this. Right? Now they got LeBron, I can't think of one. Not one. Not and, one. And this is not a shot at Kevin's success, because I'm very happy for his success, but it's not on an Eddie Murphy level. But here's what we And I, have. I'm happy he gets leading yes. roles. He's in that new Netflix movie about the plane, cool. Here's what we and you it's have- It's not that an Eddie Murphy rest, movie. Yeah, here's what me and you have that the young kids don't have. We've been here so long, we we know how it is. Yeah, right? we've seen it. So the younger kids don't really know about Eddie Murphy. They don't know his movies. And it's like also saying LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan, but these kids never saw Really, yeah. Michael Jordan play. Yeah. So, in real time. The reason why I bring up Eddie Murphy, because I want everybody to know, even if you're Kevin Hart's today, is not on his level. But to them, Kevin Hart is on that level because yeah. they don't know what Eddie did. It's like Michael Jackson being a great star, right? In his generation. But there was a man called James Brown. Oh, yeah. That would destroy Michael Jackson. Yeah, in fact, when Michael auditioned for Motown, he did a James Brown song Absolutely. that was dancing like yep. James Brown. If you, That's how he got signed. Exactly. By pretending to be James Brown, his idol. And people don't know about James Brown, but oh, yeah. I'm telling you people now, if you put Michael Jackson on the show and James Brown on the same show, Michael Jackson will get destroyed. Yeah, I mean, you might even be able to say that about like Little Richard. Oh, yes. The inventor of rock and the roll. Inventor, the inventor. And I think James Brown worked for Little Richard at one time. I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah. people. That's what I'm saying. And that's why That's why you got to have knowledge. That's why if people don't have knowledge, you can easily get tricked in this game. Well, one of the people that uh, Cat Williams took a shot at was Ludacris. Mm. And Ludacris did a whole little freestyle response. So uh, Cat Williams actually did uh, the podcast with Suge Knight, and he did a rap. In response to Ludacris, he That's said, uh, "Hilarious." He said, "In real life, I'm fast and furious. In real life, you bi curious." 
This shit is hilarious, man. Yeah. The way this is going is so comical. It's comical and embarrassing. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, Suge used to manage Cat Williams, so the two of them actually have a real relationship. That's hilarious. Now, I, like I said, I would never say nothing bad about Suge. Suge is a, a great friend of mine. I've known Suge before any of these kids was around. Me and Suge go back to the 80s when he was the bodyguard for me and the DOC on NWA tour. So I've seen the growth of Suge. I've seen him come from a bodyguard to one of the most phenomenal um, producers in the hip-hop industry. I've seen it. And um, to see um, Cat, um, what's the word for Cat? To c- cause and havoc mm-hmm. in the community. Very sugar like Yeah, cause and havoc. I, hey, listen, you got to, if anybody's against Cat, just ride the wave with him. Let him have his fun. It's just one of them moments mm-hmm. that we'll probably never see again. It's not positive. It's not negative. It's entertaining. And you have to know the difference. Well, uh, in the interview, Kat talked about how he's given up $50 million multiple times because he wouldn't sacrifice, uh, you know, his own decency. And he talked about how Martin Lawrence hit him up and said, hey, I want to do this this buddy movie with you. When they came in, it was Big Mama's House 2. And he was going to be expected to wear a dress. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, I'm not doing that. And I think he referenced Dave Chappelle. Right. And I looked it up. And Dave Chappelle talked about when he was doing uh, Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence, the director came to his dressing room and said, hey, we want you to wear this dress. We want you to be this prostitute that helps Martin Lawrence break out of jail. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to wear a dress. But with the internet being the internet, some footage came out where Dave Chappelle, back in the day, did a skit with Howard Stern where he's wearing a dress. Wow. Have you seen that? No. Man, you can't lie on this thing. It'll catch up to you. I've seen well, that before. News, and, uh, we got some great guests coming in. <laughs> wow. Hey, what are you guys laughing at so much? I think I fared up too much, jerks. All right, let's... Uh, so there's Dave Chappelle with uh, makeup on, uh, some fake titties. Make sure you show that on the, when we yeah, do we're, this. Yeah, we're, we're going to show it. Yeah, make sure you show it. We're, we're going to show it. Um, so... Dave Chappelle did wear a dress back in the day. And let me tell people how the world has changed. I said, back in the day, there was a comedian from my hometown called Jersey City, New Jersey. His name was Flip Wilson. I want everybody to Google Flip Wilson. He had a TV show called The Flip Wilson Show. Mm -hmm. And what made his show so phenomenal back in the day, he had a character named Geraldine. And he used to always say, the devil made me do it. That was his thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Back in the day, it wasn't taken so seriously of a man wearing a dress. It was looked at as fun, and you kept it going, you kept it moving. 40, 50 years later, to wear a dress is truly time. Now, now, would I wear a dress? No, it ain't happening. Yeah. But it was a time that you can do that, and no one will be saying what they're saying now. The world has just truly changed. Um, especially men are not agreeing with another man wearing a dress. And usually what men say, women follow when they uh, get something. A woman will say, oh, that's not a man's man wearing a dress code. Even up to Martin and Big Mama's house before the world changed, people went to see that movie. Yeah. And people cheered him. Well, I mean, Martin dressed up like a woman on the Martin show. On the Martin show. Uh, with Shanene. Yes. Yeah. And, and people laughed at so, him. So one did, time. Uh, I mean, so did Jamie, Jamie Foxx. Fox. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ugly Girl Wanda. Yep, sure did. Well, a, lot so, of, a lot of black comedians wore dresses. The world changed because then, I mean, I was always against it. Yeah. I'm being honest. I really was. Yeah. I, ne- yeah, I me too. I would never want to see nobody dress up like a woman, and I never wanted to impersonate anyone. Because I used to always say, "I'm so fly. Why would I want to be another motherfucker?" That used to be my line. And um, world changed, and that's all that that's all that happened. The world changed, and you adapt. But again, 
your past can be brought up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So be careful what you say. And if you if you wore a dress back in the day, defend it. Say, yo, yeah, I, I, I wore a dress back then, but I would never right. do that now. Yeah, you because gotta put, we got you gotta to put it all out there first. You would put it out there first and right. you'll protect yourself. Right, because Chappelle hasn't commented on that whole dress video. No, and, he's and, been and, quiet. And, yeah, he's been quiet. And Dave, I love you. We're not trying to put you down. We were just referencing certain things in this in this business. Yep. You know, and it's interesting because, well, me and Lunell talked about this. I remember Dion Cole hit me out of the blue about this as well. Mm -hmm. Cat Williams gives money away like nobody else. I heard that. I heard that. So, for example, I had Boosie on my show recently. When Boosie got out of prison, he went to go see him. And Cat just rolled up on him after the show and just threw like a, it was like a towel. Right. Into his car and they just ran off. Mm -hmm. and they weren't even sure what it was. Right. Like, was it flyers? Who, who knows? Mm -hmm. They opened it up and it was like 15000 in cash. Right. I saw that interview. I got a call that morning. He had a show that night in New Orleans. This is when I first came home from prison. And uh, he got in touch with my people and said, I want to get boosted two tickets, a couple of tickets to come to my show at the arena tonight. So uh, me and my chick, we went to the arena. And uh, called me backstage, treated me like a king, man, and uh, and didn't give me nothing right then. I was get I was getting in my car, pulling off. I was damn near pulling off, and he ran up with a rubber band and a towel. Huh, Boosie? And ran from the thing, ran back in the uh, arena. Oh, didn't even see. He didn't give me a chance to say thank you. Uh. He didn't, I thought it was weed. <laughs> I thought it was weed because it was wrapped up tight. And my boy handed it back to me. And it was all 100, man, 15,000, bro. Damn. I had been home nine days. Uh, Beanie Siegel said that Cat gave him a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. and then went to his block and gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars to the people on his block yes. that just weren't kind of financially struggling. Right. Someone said that they liked his mink. He took it off, gave him the mink. Right. But you saw him, you throw his yeah, mink Yeah, he was on a show that we like did. That. Yeah. And um, he gave people money, and he threw his mink in the audience and walked off. Yeah, I was there, I saw that. That's just his thing. That's just his thing. He gives away money. Yeah, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that either. Yeah. And I ain't <laughs> giving up my mink either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'm the kind of person, I got to make, I'll give people money if I feel there is no, you gotta really be sincere about what you're saying. But what mostly when people ask me for money, it's the BS that comes behind the money, meaning I could detect lies. I don't find it authentic. And that's why I have my issue. If yeah. people would just, like don't be passive aggressive. If you text me, you, you need money, then you don't really want the money. I'm old school. You gotta be man or woman to call me on the phone, tell me what you're going through. Not begging, just talking to me. Yeah. Then, too, because we got rules as men. If I ain't heard from you in three years, yeah, you can't hit me. You got to be insane, right? To call me to ask for money, because where's the respect? Yeah. Or if I'm walking down the street and you're homeless, and you see me with my children, and you're not man or woman enough to hold your pride, because there's gonna be other people walking by. To ask me for money, you see me with my kids. That's a disrespect to me. And now by myself, it's a different ball game. Yeah. But you got to have some type of honor and respect about yourself. Oh, that man's with his children. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I mean, when people ask me for money, if they really need it, I will give it to them and I won't expect it back. Right. Now, if I get it back, great. Yeah. But I'm not going to ask for it back. Right. That's And that's good to know. Right. Mm -hmm. And... If they ask me for more money without paying back the initial amount, yeah, then the yeah, answer is no. Absolutely, because now you're being disrespectful. Now trying to you know use you me. haven't tried to pay back that initial amount, and now you want more. Unfortunately, I gave you what I could give you. If you want to pay that back at some point, you can come back to me and we can right. Yeah, at least pay it back, and then then ask, or at least try to pay it back. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and a lot of times I do get it back. Yeah, but I don't expect for it back. Because I know that if I expect it back and I start hitting the person up and start getting the excuses, then that's going to turn into animosity. And I'm glad that you said that. Yeah. I'm 63, about to be 64. I am at an age. 
I'm not calling you to about, yo, when you gonna get that back. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna call. I'm not doing that at my no, age. No. I have never, I don't remember the last time I've asked for some money back. Maybe 10 years ago or something. Yeah, I'm not doing that. And I'm not handing it out either. But if I hand it out, I just want people to know, I, I'm, I'm just too old to say, yo, when you gonna get that back to me? No, this is yours. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, okay, whatever. I don't even wanna hear the details of how you're gonna pay it back. Absolutely. You need it, I got it. You've been there for me before. Right. We have a relationship. Here you go. Right. But you can't come back again. It's done. Unless yeah. you pay that unless back. Unless you pay that back. Right. And if you pay it back, then yeah, I'll, yeah. I got you I again. Like, if, like I, if I have it. Yeah, if you have it. If I have yeah. it. Now, speaking of money, you had a little issue with Michael Blackson back in the day. I did? Well, you said that you told him, and I guess his manager. Oh, it was Chris Smith. All right. Chris Smith's agent at CAA. And me and Chris always had beef because I'm my own independent promoter. Mm -hmm. So if back in the day, if there was a promoter booking a show and they was also going through Chris to book his comedians, me and him would clash heads because Chris being CAA would try to get the promoter to say, don't use TK Kirkland, use my comedians. I used to always try to make promoters men because if I'm putting up money it's my money now you're not gonna tell me who to put on my show but the comedians will all fall that's like I'm ahead of go rock with my street crew because you're not gonna tell us who to put on our show and I felt that the my hustler friends was more strong in their decision making and wasn't gonna allow um anybody to tell us. I mean, we had people that was actually coming to LA to, to, to meet Chris Smith, if he knows this. Hmm. Like, Cruz was getting ready to come. They was looking for him, because he would finagle people out of their money, would do a lot of crazy things. And people who put on shows have to know it's your money. You don't have to allow someone to tell you who to put on your show. Even that, like say a headline, because all this changed in my career, in my lifetime, my 40 years. There was a time that you could put whoever was on the show. Then certain comedians, when they started getting more popular, so they wouldn't be, not exploited, someone else to be funny with them on the show, they start bringing their own comics. Okay. So that they would, could be protected. So that's what, and so some people got out of business, the meaning some people, some comedians wouldn't be able to work. What I did in 40 years, now let's say the last five years, I started putting on, nobody on my show, just me. The reason why I wouldn't just put me on the show wasn't that I didn't think other comics was funny. It's just that if you have four comics on the show that's African-American, all of us, it may not be the same material, but it's gonna be almost the same topics. Mm. Not same jokes, right? same topics. Now you sit in the audience and I talk about Will Smith. You talk about Will Smith. Hey, bro, I was talking about Will Smith. The show is redundant. Yeah. So you have to put different people on the show. So it all comes down to, if you say something to a comic, the way the kids move today, they'll go tell other people, he's threatening me, he's holding me back. He knows that I'm funnier than him. Yeah. Funnier than who? <laughs> I've been doing this 40 years. So to avoid all that, it really messes it up for other comics that I would love to get opportunities to, because I would love to have you on the show if you're, if you understood comedy IQ. Well, you had mentioned something to the effect of you told Michael Blackson and this other guy how much money, Bingo. how much money you made, right? And they laughed at you. They laughed, and I took it like a man, because my whole life was never have to prove nothing to someone, and on that particular day, I got caught slipping. And I wanted to prove that what I make, and I said, nah, it ain't worth it. Let people think what they want to think. Well, you also said something interesting, and this kind of brings me back to the, the Taraji conversation, mm -hmm. was you said everyone you know who had had agents had money problems later in life. Always. Everybody's yeah, Explain had what that means. There's a perception if you see a pastor that that pastor's honest. And the pastor could be the most corrupt person in the building. When you have an agent, you think your agent is the most loyal person on the planet. 
not knowing that the person has a heart, not knowing that the person has a mortgage, not knowing that person has bills. Multiple clients, usually. Multiple clients. Yes. And you don't know the character of that person, really. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I n never liked, if, and I never put myself in a position, you're not going to go in this office and negotiate a deal for me, and I don't know everything that's going on. Hmm. That ain't happening. Forget that. The mindset of comedians, they're so, to me, brainwashed of having an agent. Say that you came to me, I'm a regular person, you said, TK, I want to book you for a show. Most comedians, they want to feel big, they'll say, call my agent. <laughs> yeah. You just gave your agent 20% of a deal that it was directly to you. to you. Yeah, you could have kept that the 20% yourself. You keep it for yourself. Your yeah. agent only gets what they kill. But then some people don't know how to manage themselves. Some people don't know their worth. So they need someone to speak for them. And there are so many people in this game that have run to their agent when someone came to you with some money. And for you to feel important, you said... Talk to my agent. Yeah, and you lose the hustle that the agent is doing for you. So once you lose that agent... And oh, the phone be, calls aren't coming. You don't know what to do with yourself. What to you do with yourself? Yeah. Every, I have booked myself so much, Vlad, that I'm booked till I'm 74 years old. Damn. Because you got that big deal with Live Nation. Yeah, that, that, that's before Live Nation. Now, even when I did the deal with Live Nation, it's a 10-year deal. Woof. How many shows? 43 cities a year. Damn. And... The deal is that when we get to year, when we get to 20, 25 shows in the contract, they have to start booking the venues a year in advance mm. because there's strategy to this. See, people don't understand. See, I think different than most people. See, if you don't know, if you don't start doing it a year in advance, I'm not the biggest roster on Live Nation. So when they go out to do certain shows, guess what? Your Saturdays are taken. Mm. But see, but every big comic don't go on the road every year. I go on the road every year. Yeah. So guess what? If I can't get all the Saturdays this year, I'll have them next year. Or the year after because I stay ahead of the game. Didn't you say there was an issue uh, that you had with Cedric the Entertainer on a show that you were supposed to be on? And I'm going to explain to people this. Um, I have no beef with said. I move like a man. I'm solid. I'm not here to cause confusion. I'm just bringing... Um, um, awareness to things that how I'm just tired of people being petty. So one time um, me and my crew got together and we was putting shows together. A lot of people have done shows for me that has no idea it was my money behind the show. Okay. I've been doing that over 15, 20 years. But on this particular city, it was Cincinnati, Ohio, and me, we had some people there and we said, yo, let's put a show together um, and let's do, who you want to book, TK? I said, let's put Seb, we put some other people. But I wanted to perform. You know, I had a couple girlfriends there. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying life. Okay. Put the money up, it's promoting. But I already knew, and when I was coming up, I intimidated comedians. Because my show was just so good that other, was, other people would say, I'm not following him. And if you want to prove that ex to Tina Grahams, that's the Bob Sumners who used to book, um, Def Jam, ask Bill Bellamy, ask D.L. Hughley and all the, they'll tell you, ask Godfrey. When I would go on these shows, it would, it, it would literally be arguments. I'm not going on after T.K. Kirkland. Yes, so Seb was supposed to do on the show mm -hmm. and he found that I was on the show. And he made me sign a contract. And this is facts that I wouldn't perform on my own show that I put up my own money. Now, said I ain't mad at you. It's just all this time, it's I, I swept it under the rug. It's just the time to mention it. You know, it's a time and place for everything. This is the time. You still with my man, when I see y'all shake your hand, I ain't got no beef, but this actually happened. Now, as a businessman, I laid back because the goal was he bought, we put money in my pocket. I ain't tripping. Yeah. I wanted to perform, but I got a check. 
listen, when it's your company, you could easily take a step back. Some of our biggest interviews, I didn't do the interview. Yes. You know, Shaka Khan, one of my favorite artists. Lunell did it. Right. Still got the Vlad TV logo on it. That's right. And the revenue comes to Vlad TV. I'm exactly. cool with that. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and that's what me and you are here for today. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, because me and you always push being a man. Maturity. Maturity. Yeah. And what our interviews is that when you see whatever is going out there in the world, we want you young men and women to say, you know what? That's petty. I'm not getting caught up in that. I'm going to worry about my own life. Because remember this one thing, everybody. Everybody likes looking at car accidents. See, when there's a big crash, people slow yeah. down. All the rubber neckers. Yeah. You always want to look. Learn to ignore the car accidents and stay in your lane. Mm. It's real. Well, uh, Yo Gotti's brother, Big Juke, oh, that hurt recently me. got killed right after a funeral in Memphis. I guess his mom was around him too when it happened. Yes. And uh, listen, I don't know the details of what happened. I'm not from Memphis. I don't, you know, I know a few people from Memphis. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to Crunchy Black and DJ Paul. But this seems like a continuation of the whole Young Dolph yes. murder. I Two years I, for later. For some reason, I said, maybe it's not. But when you read the comments, when I saw it, I read the comments, and I said, um, well, I got it. It must be that. But you would think, like I said, I don't know. I don't I'm know I'm just either. guessing, but it seems like a continuation of that. And then there was, like, people on the on the internet saying that uh that this that juke had forty thousand on someone's head and you know on young Dolph's head i don't know whether it's true but this is people talking right. and then it, it's just a it's just it's a disaster. Just sad. it's sad and i guess yo Gotti was right there with him at the funeral as well yeah i think he just left just left yeah just left and his mom was there she just left the car is what i read man but i i i, I, I don't I, understand why that whole family even stays in memphis anymore i totally agree with you i think that if there wasn't, you, you know, because no one thought about that. You're absolutely right. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Because, you know, I think like uh, one of Yo Gotti's restaurants got shot up right, right. afterwards. It's yeah, like, all right, I remember that. this has gone way past the level of talking it out. People are dead. It's time to go. Totally Yo Gotti agree. has enough money to move everyone he cares about out of there. Yes, right. And not go back. I agree. It's a wrap. And when you like the old gangster movies, you know what they always say? I'm not going nowhere, but that's ignorant. And then you see him die. And you, you see know, him die. At the end of the movie. Yeah, the goal is, uh, let me let me take Dr. Dre and Ice Cube for a second. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of problems in Compton, in Los yeah. Angeles. A lot of problems. Yeah. And when they got paid, they got the F out of there. And if you remember, I remember early Yo MTV raps. I think this was even like a Fab Five Freddy Yo MTV raps. When Ice Cube went solo, he was basically like in the hood. Right. There was a whole shot of him in the hood. He had a big swimming pool. It was mm -hmm. all fly. He had all his homies there. That didn't last long. Didn't last long. He got the hell up out of there. Shoot out, you know, people start finding out where he lived, right and then lived. it was it was a wrap. And it's just like even with my man Nipsey. He loved the hood so much, but you got to be killed away. Him. They killed him. Yeah, because. Just because you got millions of people loving you, there's someone that can hate you for the same reason people love you. Nipsey got caught up, Malcolm X, um, Martin Luther King, all these people hit just one person. That's all you so you need is one hate. So you gotta stay away. Yeah, all you need is one hater. You don't need hater. a bunch of haters. You don't need a bunch of haters. One hater is all you one need. One hater. One hater with nothing to lose. Yeah, with nothing to lose. And Dr. Dre always said it best in his album. He said, um, be seen, be heard, but not seen. That was his line. So Dr. Dre is out the way, but you still hear about him. Yeah. You don't have to be at every event. You don't have to be everywhere. And what women and men don't understand, the more that you are somewhere, you lose value. Yeah. When you are selective to where you go, and then you finally are seen, guess what? People know that must be the spot to be seen at. Yeah, listen, me, me, and Wack One Hundred had like a ten year beef that we finally squashed. Oh, he good, did my good. show, Game came did our show, and right. we we're talking about how he was like, "Yeah, man, I had people looking for you in this gang and that gang, but right. you were nowhere to be found." Right, and I'm like, I'm living in the valley. 
but I'm not out at all the events. I'm not and all the mix. Why does anybody want to bother you, Vlad? I don't get this. Who knows? Who knows, oh, man? Who knows? But God. what I'm saying is, is that like, yeah, you stay out the way stay and you stay the- safe and you go. And if I went somewhere, I would have security with me. Right. You. So I was prepared for the dumb shit that right. happened. But I wasn't just going everywhere and being in every event. Like, yo, Dre stays out the way. You don't see him at parties. Don't I always praise him. You don't see him at clubs. Yeah. All the, you know, you got to go to him if you want to do some business. He's got his own studio. Right. His own security. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that I about love him, it. man. And yeah. Yeah. And I always, always, always say rappers just use him as a, a role model. Oh, yeah. No, I remember when I interviewed uh, Michelle A., you know, because Suge's story was, oh, I was supposed to go meet Dre to talk to him at Compton. And she was like, Dre would never meet Suge Knight. Never. Well, everybody knows <laughs> he that. He would never do that. Never do she that. said that whole story's bullshit right, right off right. the top. I know for a fact that Dre would not meet Suge in Compton right. of all places. Yes, not that happened. That's not You happened. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, rest in peace, big joke, man. I never met him. But, yeah, I never uh, met him it's, either. It's a lot of tragedy over there, man. A lot of tragedy. Lot of I'm tragedy. in Memphis a lot. Oh, are you? Yeah, okay. I remember mean, a lot. Yeah. I've, I've never been there actually. Uh, yeah, it's it's good food, um, nice hotels, um, nice people. But that and, and it's a is a is a, it's a it's quite like a small town in a sense, right? A yeah. small community. So this hurt a lot of people. This hurt a lot of people. Yeah. And whatever the rumors are, it's ninety percent probably true because it's so small. So it's probably possible it's in retaliation to Young Dolph. And if that's the case, and that's his brother, you know it's going to continue. It's going to continue. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Because you're not, you're not getting past that. Not, not your older brother. And it's emotional. Yeah. Man, once, emo- once you got hate, but then it's emotion, it, it, it fuels it 100 times more. Well, uh, just today... The six guys that were accused of killing FBG Duck were all found guilty. Now, who's that? FBG Duck was a rapper in Chicago. Okay. I'd interviewed him multiple times. Okay. He, he had been a buzzing rapper for a while, but he was always in a beef with these guys from O Block. Okay. Which is like, you know, some of Chief Keef's people. And stuff right. Like oh, that. okay. Okay. And, you know, the two of them went back and forth. People were getting killed. His brother got killed at one point. Man. And I remember in all my interviews, I said, you should move away. Oh, I'm not moving away. I know how to move. You know, uh, you know, I I feel safest here. I'm not stupid, whatever else. He got killed in broad daylight on the Gold Coast of Chicago, which is like the Rodeo Drive. Right. He was in front of like a Fendi store or something. Got killed in broad daylight. And they found the six guys that were all responsible for it. And I remember I interviewed his mom about it afterwards, Mama Duck. And, you know, we were talking about how before he died, he had a song called Dead Bitches. Mm. He basically starts naming all his enemies dead friends. Right. And just name them one after another after another, how they died, and he was mocking it and stuff like that. And um, for it to end like this, him getting killed in broad daylight, six people responsible for his death all going to prison for probably 20, 30, 40 year oh, stretches. Yeah. He's, depending on their past, their record. Yeah, it's a, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And they're all young men. They're all in their 20s and oh, 30s. That's sad. And, and we always talk about jail, but I've been locked up in Chicago jail. Oh, you have? Yeah, I've been locked up in Chicago jail. How was um, it? All some, these kids is tough. All these kids is tough. And this was years. This is, in, this is in the early 90s. You, to all you young kids, if you watch this show, In jail, you have no guns. You got a knife if you're lucky. You got a knife if you're lucky. You're really going to have to have this. Yeah. And them guys in there is real. You're going to see, you're going to find real killers. You're going to find people eight, nine, ten times bigger than you. Yeah. And I'm I'm telling them they in for a, a ride of their life that they have no idea what's about to happen to them. They don't go to a prison where you even got the, um, the the jailers, the COs, who are evil and beat you. Because you see what's going on around the prisons, how they're finding dead bodies in the backyard, I mean, behind the prison, organs yeah. are gone, people are missing. They're not playing. 
Well, yeah. I mean, think about listen. I don't. I don't know about these six guys. Yeah. So this is not a a, a value. You know. Um, judgment or anything. Yeah, we're not trying to judge them. We're just trying to make I, I don't know but who we these are guys judging are. their choice. I've never, I've never interviewed them. I don't know right. them. But let's just say that all these guys are known to be shooters. Mm-hmm. That don't help you in prison. It don't help you in prison. You have no guns. No guns. You know? And most you, of these your, your kids, trigger finger ain't helping you ain't helping against you. a motherfucker who's twice your size and made a shank. really about that life. Who made a shank out of some, some you know, wire and some plastic. And who's really about that life. Who's really about that life. Re- There's people who are really about that life. And yeah. there's no rules in there, man. There's no rules in there. I told you, I don't know if I ever told you a story when I, I'll go with another crazy story. You know, I was the first person to go, not first person, first class to go to uh, Scare Straight at Railway State Prison. Yeah, yeah we talked about that. Okay, we talked about that. Talk about huge men. You saw them on the street, you walk across the street. But the other men had them dressed up in booty shorts. They had the the, the blouse tied up in a, um, one of them scarves around there. I seen it with my own eyes. Because the Scare Straight program started in 1977. See what year that started, um, Blast, if I'm right. It, it was it definitely the 70s. Uh, 78. Bingo. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, I, I I never I never wanted to go to prison. I, don't I, I got know. locked up here yes. and there, and it was more than enough. And Vlad, me and you pushed us for the last 10, 12 years that we've been on here, right? And people do listen to us because people uh, walk up to me, young man. Oh, you and Vlad helped change my life, and you made me um, make a better decision that day. Mm-hmm. And they they thank me that yeah. and thank you. Yeah, I get those DMs. You yep. get those, right? I get those, yeah. And they love that when me and you talk. They love it. And we just don't we just don't want y'all to go to jail, man. You know, not, let's say you get past the ass whooping. <laughs> the food they feed. You. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. The food. The food, uh, the lack of medical attention. If you have some sort of a medical condition, you're going to get very minimal to nothing. Um, and to sit next to someone you know that you would never sit with in a restaurant. Ever. Ever. Yeah. One of the most humiliating things that almost it got me really start, starting to do right is not this, but it's when I think back. You know, when you go through processing, you know, they shower you. You got to take all your clothes off. And then when you turn the corner, they give you your jumpsuit and underwear. Now, they're brand new packages that other men have put on. Yep. Do you understand? Yeah, it's nasty. Some other man has been in this. And you got to take all that, that consciousness of self-love and respect and how you've had a great life and know that you're nothing now. It's, it's, I don't want no one to go through that. Well, you know, the Young Thug trial is still underway. That's got to be one of the most or disorganized, dis- unorganized yeah. things I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Yeah, someone hacked into the Zoom call and started yelling, free Young, free young Thug. Right. <laughs> Miss trial. Some guy with like a British accent. It was actually kind of funny. This is insane. Yeah, and you know, like right now, this guy named YSL Tick, he's the co-founder of YSL. He's having to take the stand. And uh, they're asking what these various gang terms means. He said, what does slime mean? And he said, slug, love, I, me, everything. I saw that. <laughs> Young Thug said that Thug stands for truly humble under God. You're not dealing with a stupid jury here, right? Yes, you could come up with all types of, you know, acronyms after the fact. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? We all, everyone's smart enough to know what it means. Right. But the thing that gets me about this trial right now is this guy, YSL Tick, right? I don't know who he is. Yes. You know, I'm I've never I've never done a real young thug interview Mm -hmm. or I've never really been around those dudes. Just people I never just generally associated right. with for whatever reason. Not not any you know, we just never never cross paths. Mm-hmm. But I'm seeing this guy 
and he's got gray hair. And he looks like a scared younger man on this stage, you wow. know, on this stage, right. on this stand with the whole world watching. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure that on the street, this was a feared individual. I'm sure, oh, this is, oh, this is the co-founder of right, YSL, right, yep. this big I'm fearsome. I agree. Oh, no, don't, oh, you don't talk about this guy. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, don't, don't do anything crazy around him. He's got power. He's got juice. And right. he's sitting there on this stand with his gray hair, looking like he's 15 years old, caught by his mother for stealing from the corner store, Man. scared, knowing that every thing he answers is going to be used against him in the court of public opi opinion Absolutely. for the rest of his life yep. trying to choose his words carefully knowing he has to cooperate because right. he's probably looking at a hundred years and to know if he goes back inside we get caught slipping yeah all those guys yep. that he's talking about and it's just like is it all worth it all that all that little street fame and the all the greatest thing you said, and and this is and, and it, it even got me. It blew me away when you did this, when you broke down the percentage of a key. Yeah, that hit home with so many people mm -hmm. that you made so much sense. Yeah, it blew them away because it was so accurate to the T. You're buying kilos. You're making a very small percentage and taking a massive risk risk in the process yes it makes no financial sense yeah. you would not start a regular business if that was the risk and profit margin absolutely and no unfortunately not too many blacks understood that because we just didn't know we you thought you was doing something you sold this you made two thousand dollars you thought you was balling yeah you really thought you was balling man two thousand dollars that's it you get 20 years for that 2000 Easy. Yeah. I really thank you for it because it was basic math. It was basic strategy. But all the people I knew got it. Yeah. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. They got it. And you hear some young, dumb kids. I saw it on social media. Tell all the kids are getting more money than that now. I say, who the, who the F is arguing about something positive? This is positive. Yeah. Listen to me, people. Know the difference between when someone's trying to save your life and someone's trying to put you in jail. Or they say they or they don't care about you. Mm -hmm. We care. That's why we give the information. We share different experiences for you to make good choices so you could do right with the rest of your life. Yeah. Because no matter how tough you are, no matter how many guns you got, you know what they don't think about? They got a place for you. <laughs> right. Or think about it this way. If you get $100,000 illegally and then you get nine years in prison, you made $100,000 over 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's $10,000 a year. That's it. That is... I remember we just did a whole restaurant shoot and the, the, the co-owner of the restaurant say that they're passing this new law where all the, the food workers in California are going to get a minimum of $20 an hour. Mm. So if you're washing dishes, if you're a busboy, 20 bucks an hour. That's 40,000 a year. Right. You are making in jail, you are making 25% of minimum wage. Again. And you're sitting in jail for nine and years. And you're sitting in jail. And the psychology. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And what's crazy, on the streets, nobody will want to work, right? They'll hustle, but then go to prison and want to be a um, yeah, work, be, work in the kitchen. Work in the kitchen. Yeah, making uh three cents an hour. Making three cents an hour. I'm talking about. I'm really working. Yeah, like pride. I seen it. Pride. Yeah, making the best carrots in this prison. Exactly. Coming back for <laughs> cookies. You know, yeah, got cookies. You doing this, you sharing it with everybody, and you in the room like you really at a restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, man. This is embarrassing, man. Take these, you better listen to us. Oh, no. I, I was just interviewing Fredo Bang, who who was in prison for a while at Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was facing like 40 years. He ended right. up doing like three because, you know, they ended up dropping a bunch of stuff. And I asked what the worst thing he's ever seen in prison. 
And he said he saw this stabbing where two guys stabbed each other like 30 times. They're like stabbing each other, like right in front of them. And it's just like, and we were just talking about how this works in prison, how he had a hit out on him for a thousand dollars, how you could get someone killed for two or three thousand. And to me, that sounds crazy, but he's like, to a lifer who's already doing double, triple life, three thousand dollars. That will go a long way in that man's life. That's right. That could transform that that's man. Millions. That man's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's millions in That's prison. a whole new year for him. That's right. Cookies whenever he wants right. it, drinks. Yep. You know. Snacks, snacks. Fritos, like, yo, all that's that. big. That's big. Thank oh, God. oh, so you going to give me another life sentence? Who, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Easy. Easy. And that's how it works. Don't go on ladies. the other side of that wall. Don't go, ladies and gentlemen. No, man. Because they ain't like they close. Make that prison. legal money. Yeah, they're not closing prisons. No, <laughs> prisons don't go out of business. They don't go out of business. They build them more. They build more. So they know something. <laughs> they know you are not going to listen. Let's do. Let's flip it. Matter of fact, I got more game for you. Something I came up with years ago. Okay. Let's put the police out of business. How do you do it? Stop doing By crime. Doing, stop doing crime. There you go. If you really dislike the police, let's put them out of business yeah. and stop doing crime. Do the right thing. They'll go away. Well, Keefe D is still locked up. Mm. Uh, they actually granted him a $750,000 bail, like that. which if he pays that, he can get house arrest. Mm -hmm. But last I checked, he can't come up with that type yeah, of money. Yeah, and I said to myself, um, when I got that, when I saw that, when I read it, mm -hmm. I said, oh man, that's cool. He's gonna be able to come home. Cause I was thinking he had that. So I called all the homies, you know, like we all know each other. And I called the crew and and they said what you said. They said he don't have it. But they was also mad that he took the celebrity thing so far to put himself in that position. Like I really called deep into the crew, you know, from Cleveland on. And um, cause people are different places there. Mm -hmm. And they were very upset that he put himself in this situation because he didn't have to open his mouth. He didn't have to say anything. He could have just been quiet. And like I said, you know- yeah, He'd you be out right now if he didn't do any interviews or write a book. Nothing. Really, it's the book that set it all off. Yeah, you didn't have to do anything. And I like that people listen to what you talked about last time about the disclaimer about when they come on your show. People really- was listening to that. But what I also tell people too when we, when I'm traveling, I said, Vlad don't act, Vlad asks questions. You have the right to shut up. Yeah. But what people do, they want to impress you, right? They want to impress because you're you're big out here, Vlad. Don't let nobody else tell you nothing else. You're I don't care how many other podcasts come. Vlad. And they want to impress people. They know people are going to watch it. I get people so every now and then, yo, can you get me on Vlad? I got a criminal story I know he'll like. And I tell them, Vlad, don't do that. I, yeah, I, I don't just do random criminal. I said, I don't, I don't. I, I, said, I, I get don't. a lot of those requests. I said, yeah, I said, I don't get in Vlad's business. Yeah, I, I said, I me it. and Vlad are friends. Yeah. I don't get in his business. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it, it's definitely, it's definitely sad when you see situations like Keefe D because sad. yes, Greg Kading put out the video, you know, put out the audio and everything else like that. And I, and from my point of view, what I think is that Keefe wanted to defend himself when the audio came out of him cooperating and, you know, telling on his, his nephew Orlando and everything Oh, I didn't else know like that. that. What happened? Oh, you know the the story? No. Okay, so 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 here is here is wow, what happened. Wow, I didn't know this. Okay, well, let me hear this. Okay, so Keefe D was a person of interest in the Tupac case. Okay, you know people that knew placed him in the car. Right. So when Greg Kading from LAPD took on the the murder case, uh, he knew that Keefe was a key person okay. in this case. So he started you know following and investigating Keefe. And he found that he had a whole PCP operation, right? So once they got all the all the pieces put together, okay, the PCP is here, and this is his role in the operation. 
they went to his house and they said, hey, um, we're going to arrest you for this PCP case or you can come talk to us and possibly make a deal. Mm. So they met up with him uh, at his lawyer's office. One of the cops had a secret recording device on him, mm. which some people think is not legal, but it actually is. Okay. When you talk to police, they can record you at any point. Okay. Yeah, your, your they do privacy, tell you. Yeah. Your privacy you is say. out the window. Yeah, they do even, say even, you even say. if you don't see them recording it, it can still be recorded. And, and, okay, and I didn't know is, that. Good, good, yeah, good it is know. what it is. Okay. So they basically explained to him that they offered him something called a proffer agreement, which said, look, we know about this PCP case, but we really want to know about the Tupac case. So tell us everything you know about the Tupac murder. And if, and we already know a lot of stuff ourselves, if we see that it's all truthful, we will not prosecute on the PCP case. Wow. So he talked about exactly, you know, for hours, he talked about the whole situation. Put himself in the car, passed the car to, you know, passed the gun to Orlando, what led up to it, everything else mm -hmm. like that. After Greg Kading, you know, and he was able to walk away from the PCP case, right? Okay. They also tried to get him to wear a wire with Eric Von Zip. Yes. They flew him out. They had the plane tickets, everything else like that. But they figured that Zip was just a little bit too savvy yeah. to go meet with someone he hasn't seen for years and suddenly talk about a murder case. Right. Yeah. Zip is my man. He's a smart guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. So ultimately, after Greg Kading left the force, he went to Keefe's house and said, I'm going to release this audio. Just so you know, I'm writing a book and doing a documentary and I'm releasing this. And Keefe's like, well, do what you got to do. Okay. So Keefe didn't write the book. Someone else wrote the book. No, no. Keefe did write a book. Okay. After Greg Cady put all, put some of the audio out and everything else like that, then okay. Keefe decided to write a book on his own. Okay. Okay. And then my interview happened right after that book. Got okay. Written. Oh, yeah. It was big. And that's what I mean when... um. From John Gotti, let's make sure we're clear, ladies and gentlemen, to some of the most notorious gangsters in the world, everybody got locked up because they talked too much. Yeah. And most people usually do it to themselves. Yes. It's what I feel is more of a rarity for someone else to put you in prison. Right. Usually you're the star of that show. Absolutely. You know, even my friend Taxstone, I remember when I talked to his lawyer, Yes, there was witnesses and Troy Ave got on the stand and whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, but the, the jury wasn't really buying it. But apparently Troy Ave had a phone in Rikers and he started getting on Discord and he started talking about the crime and they were able to get those messages. And then those were shown to the jury and the jury members said that's really what buried him. And now he got 25 you mean years. Tax had a phone. Tax Stone had a phone. And he was talking about his case to somebody on the phone and admitting to certain things in those text messages. They caught him slipping. Because you young people, you, what's the, they got a machine in. It could capture all they that. They could capture it. You, you may think you're getting away. Yeah. No, listen, and I've, and I've had conversations with Taxstone over that phone, but I've always been like, I know this could potentially be bugged, so let me not say nothing. Yeah, like, I don't understand why they, they got tech. I saw it on the news yesterday. You know, I'm staying way out. Mm -hmm. They want to send cars no more to the crime scene. They send the, the things in the sky. Uh, the drones? The drones. Yeah. And people are running and hiding, right? The drones now have infrared. Mm. They stand in there miles away. Yeah. You don't even know they're there. Watching you. But, you know, ultimately, Keefe D, the whole case stems on one thing. Because he's saying that all of the things that he said and wrote about are all entertainment. He did it to get money or to get that's out That's what of, he said recently. That's what he's saying now. Right, that's what he's saying now. He's saying it's now, all fake. Right. <laughs> he originally said it to get out of a, a drug case. Right. And now he did it because Vlad TV paid him and these other podcasts paid him and he was making it all up. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the crux of the case. If the jury believes that, he'll be able to walk free. Right. If they don't believe it, he's probably going to do the rest of his life in prison. Wow. And I pray that they take it. I pray that they believe you, Keefe. There you go. The, the thing that always made me nervous 
is having 12 people make a decision on your life. Because you got to convince yeah. 12 people that what they hear is the truth. Yeah, or a reasonable doubt. Or a reasonable doubt. You got you to gotta have at least one of them say, I'm not sure. Right. It could go both ways. Mm -hmm. And and that's another thing, too. I used to talk in my stand-up. I wanted um, blacks to start going more to um, um, jury duty. So they can see how it works. See how it works. Because yeah. we, we need more of us there. Because most people don't know, understand the gray and white of, of the black community. And if we have more of us there, we can tell the rest of the world, no, nah, this is the way this stuff goes. But if somebody has never been in the hood, they don't know black culture in a sense. And you see things the way you're raised and what you think is right and what you think is wrong, you can really send somebody to jail away that was really telling the truth. But because you don't know about their life or yeah. the way that community <laughs> works, Oh, yeah. I mean, they could play songs and say that this is really meaning this. And if right. you don't really know hip hop, you'll go, okay, well, that's what the prosecutor said. So, yeah, okay. I guess right. He's, he's yeah, talking right. about killing everybody. It's crazy, <laughs> he's man. He's admitting to all his murders in these songs. But it could be about something else. Yeah. Again, what do we see in life since we've been on this planet? The world has changed. Yep. All the stuff that we grew up on, the way we saw things, mm -hmm. has truly changed in, right in front of us. Well, uh, Jonathan Majors. He was found guilty. Relatively petty charges. Petty. But with that guilty verdict, and he got dropped can. by Marvel. That's right. Faster than Diddy paid Cassie. Yeah. Both horrible situation. But again, me and you talked about this a while back too. And we talked about young men. When you get successful, you know, one, stay away from BS. Two, date. Like, why are you trying to settle down? Like, Jonathan Majors, and if you're listening, it's about to be a major star. He essentially was a major star. Yes, you can't even say about to be because he was a main character in the Marvel franchise. Yes. And he's a young kid. Yeah, well, his 30s, 30s maybe. Something, right? Yeah. So my, what I'm saying is he would have been working for the next 30 years. He's 34. Yeah, he's yeah. been working for the next 30-something years, Vlad. Mm -hmm. So... Arguably, he lost about three, four hundred million in his Easy. career. Easy. Oh, yeah. Over the course of your career? Because now career. you got to go step by step to try to get back in the, and again, in the you good graces judged, yeah. of these big studios and have them say, okay, we're, you know, like for example, like Mel Gibson never recovered. Yeah. Mel Gibson gets a role here and there. Yeah. They put him in a little something. People forget how much of a monster Mel was when he started mega doing all star. that racist, anti-Semitic shit. He was a mega star. Brave heart. Last temptation or uh Last Temptation of Christ? Yeah. He was he was You big. know, um he was making his own films. Like he yes. was a mega A-list star. Yes. And now he's a guy that gets a role every so often. Right. And I haven't seen him in nothing in years. Exactly. Yeah. I see him stuff here and there, but okay. what I'm saying is no one's putting him in a Marvel film. He's not a Robert Downey Jr. Mm -mm. And even though you could say he's just as good of an actor. And Robert Downey Jr. messed up way before the internet came. Yeah, well, he had some drug issues. He had drug issues. Yeah. And he got beat up real bad in L.A. County Jail, yeah, right? Heard about that, yeah. But he did it before, yeah, before the, the internet. internet. Yep. Well, I remember during the trial, uh, there were some text messages where Jonathan Majors was telling his uh, white girlfriend that she needs to be more like Coretta Scott King. And then when he did this interview, when he's talking about Megan Good, who he's now dating, that she's his Coretta. And yeah. the jokes have been nonstop ever it's since. Nonstop. So I remember one of the tweets was, does Jonathan Major not know any other black lady names except for Coretta? Right, right. <laughs> uh, the thing about him, obviously he doesn't know the way um, people think. One, I would have never went to court with another woman. I would have went to court by myself. True. See, people don't understand the strategy of court. Like this is this is this is, you know, this is what I do. You don't go to court when you are on a domestic violence case with another woman. Then too, we talk about high profile case. Yeah. Now we talk about a white woman. Yeah. Now we talk about the jury. Now let's say three different women on there, and three might have gone through a, some type of domestic violence in their lifetime. Yeah. And now you have to deal with convincing them 
that what happened with you is petty. Like if we was on the jury, we'd have let him go. Yeah. Because we've been in life and we like, that look. And he was running away from her. He was like, running from her. He's yeah. gonna get found guilty. Nah, we not guilty. This is what we would have said. But because of how these people live their lives, and because he brought that woman to the court, on top of that, she recorded him on some type of conversations of him arguing, whatever. To me, I thought that was a setup. But here's the ultimate thing. He didn't have to go to trial. He could have pled. But he knew that if he pled guilty, he would get dropped from all his movie roles. Okay. See what I'm saying? It was yeah. a bit of a catch-22. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I can plead guilty not doing it. I mean, he probably won't do jail time anyways. It's yeah, not it's like... He's going to get jail time. You think he so? He took the trial. He took it to trial. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I guess the jail time, the, the probation yeah, you don't comes get before. Yeah, you don't get jail if you don't yeah, go to tri right. trial. They, they punish you when you go to you yeah. take it to trial. You're wasting people's money. You're wasting the tax money. Yeah. Right. You could have you you taken the, the plea deal yeah, and he's saved everyone all this money and time. He's gonna get, for him not to get jail time, is going to be very, very, very So he's going to get like what? Maybe about a month, six months, a couple months. Yeah, a couple months. A little slap on yeah, the wrist. Yeah, a couple slap on the wrist. But yeah, I mean. But people don't know how to hustle. Let me give you an example. When you had that kind of power that he has, you pay the girl, you go send her to Switzerland for a year. I'm going to give you $2 million, and you're going to get it little by little until the case goes away. Yeah, but then you get into a witness tampering, which is a whole yeah, You're other... going to take that risk. That's no, a, no, that's... Watch, where I'm, watch where I'm going, though. <laughs> okay. Because if they can't find you, they're not going to go to trial. Yes. But that's considered wit wit witness tampering. 100%. Wow. One hundred percent. You're getting rid of a lot. witness. We damn, we did. You're that paying back off in the a day. witness now. R. Kelly pulled that off, like you know when he in his first, you know, it's crazy in the hood. I'm thinking what you. I'm not gonna bring up certain situations, but we don't think like that in the hood. We think like you know we're doing it, but that's really because when I used to think of witness tampering, I'm glad you brought it up. I used to think they went to the person the, on the jury. I always thought this was only with the jury. No. Wow. It's with anyone involved in the trial. So, for example, man, for example, YNW Melly, he's still facing his murder trial. It was uh, a mistrial, well, a hung jury. Uh, a couple of the members basically were were not mm -hmm. were saying not guilty. So, it ended up being a mistrial. They have to redo the whole trial. While they're waiting for the new trial they found evidence of him witness tampering, of him reaching out through someone else to tell this girl to, to change her testimony and in exchange, you know, blah, 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 blah. I had 1090 Jake on my show talking about that, and he's a, a jail guy who breaks all this stuff down. He explained to me that in Florida, witness tampering is a life sentence by itself, not counting the murders. So by itself, he can get life just for witness tampering because it breaks down the legal system to such an extent that the law can't do its job anymore. If you got everyone flipping and changing their story and whatever else. And I read that. And again, I'm glad you brought it to me. Again, witness I tampering. thought he did something with the jury. Nah, no, no, no. I mean, buying off a juror, that happens. You know, so for example, John Gotti did that. Yes. You know, Sammy the Bull talked about how he gave one of the right. uh, one of the jurors like 40000 He got caught after the fact. Mm -hmm. That's how John Gotti was beating some of his cases. Yeah, he, that's how he's trials. beating all his cases. Right, yeah, up to that mm -hmm. time. You right. can do that. But if there's one key juror, one key witness, and they get up and suddenly, you know, I mean, that, that kind of what, I think that's what Tory Lane's trying to do in his trial. Right. Because Kelsey got on the stand and whole different story. Wow. No, I didn't see this. No, I didn't see that. No, I don't remember. I don't His know. His situation was horrible because yeah. I would have took that deal. I would have took he the He had a two-year deal. Well, he it was three, deal. and then I found out it was actually two at one point early on. Yeah, he turned down a two. But, yeah, I mean, she got on that stand to the point where they had to play her original testimony, which completely contradicted everything she said on that stand. But it was clear that it was witness tampering. They asked her who paid for your lawyer. She said, I don't remember. You don't remember who's paying for your lawyer? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Man. Really? You don't remember, huh? Wow. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, that that all that stuff people hearing, you done.
Man, listen, it sounds good in the movies, but in real life... Yes, in the movies. In real life, when they start connecting the dots and see that you're trying to do something underhanded to try to basically go around the legal system, mm -hmm. that will be way more harsh than sometimes your original charge. Man. And I'm Life listening. in prison in Florida for to witness tampering. Keep that in mind. So if you think you're just going to pay off whoever... Right. And I think about what you say. I think about my life. I think about how I've made something out of myself. And ladies and gentlemen, and if you get through life, you got to be a good person to the day you die. Because even if you're 89 and you do something wrong, they're going to lock you up. It ain't no... Yeah. You see it all the time. Yeah, it ain't no, oh, because you're a this certain age, you ain't going to prison. Yeah, you're doing life in prison, essentially, at that point. Whatever's left. Whatever's left. Yeah. So you got to be right for the rest of your life. Kodak Black is back in jail again. Oh, I saw that. He got pulled over. So he fell asleep high in his car. At first, they're saying it was cocaine, but now they're saying it's actually oxy. Okay. It wasn't a sleeping thing? They found out it was actual drug? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. He tested positive for oxy. Man. And what they're saying is that, because remember, Trump pardoned him. Yes. They're saying that he's going to get that original sentence back because he violated all. Because when he got out, he was still on probation. And they're going to basically have him do that original sense all over again. You're I, kidding I, me. Yeah, no, I'm serious. And I've really compared him in some of my interviews. I feel like this is Man. this, gener you know, Kodak Black is this generation's DMX. Not in the way they rap or, or mm -hmm. the way they look, but two highly admired artists with huge fan bases who could do big venues who have serious drug issues and are always in and out of jail. He don't get it, do he, Vlad? I don't know. And they was whooping his ass at one jail that he had a transfer. Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. They, I'm talking about they was really whooping his ass. And now he's going to get... And he paid for that pardon. Yeah. Millions, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess, man, and it's... Uh, yeah, that's sad, man, because he's talented. He's talented. People love him. Like, he really has a and, serious and I used family. to always think he was, you know, not, 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 he's not my favorite. He's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Yeah. But I saw him one night. It was like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning watching um, one of them late shows. He had a suit on, and he was singing. I'm talking about a beautiful song. Hmm. I said, oh, my God, this man is... He is talented. Yeah, no, he's dope. But in his jail cell right now. So he's not even out. No, he's not out. He's in jail right I've now. I've been so busy, you know, been out the country, back. You can't keep messing up over and over again. I don't care how good your lawyer is. That's At right. some point, it's it's done. Because it looks like over. he could do that. This yeah. time they said no. Well, yeah, huh? I mean, he spent all the money and everything. You know, like I said, he, I mean, Biden's not going to pardon him. So, you know, I mean, Trump was the So only... this last time he got caught, I thought he bailed out. So he's he's not on the street. Yeah, no, no, he's not bailed out. He's oh, in jail right now as man. we speak. As we speak. Damn, Vlad. I like that kid. I mean, I said he was dumb and he hadn't gotten in trouble in a while. I said, you, you know, when I did think about it, I said, okay, he's going to be all right. Yep. Well, this is someone that you've had contact with a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, BG from Cash Money <laughs> is now out. My man. Now, you were on tour with Cash Money back in the day. Yeah, sure was. Did you and BG uh, form any we sort were, of we relationship? We were not close, but I, you know, I was close with Lil Wayne the most. And okay. Lil Wayne and Juvie. And, and, but me and Baby got close over the years. Matter of fact, Baby was doing something for me with Live Nation. Um, shout out to Baby. So we, okay. we, we got a little good thing popping. But um, BG, um, I hope he understands his situation to go to jail that long because he was a kid. He was a child yeah. when he went, you know? He's been locked up for, what, 10 years or something? Yeah, and when I met him, you know, he had a little drug problem. And I, I, I was the guy who toured with R. Kelly, Cash Running Me. When I saw things I didn't like, I was just quiet. I never gave an opinion. I never judged anybody. I just remember BG being on the elevator with us, and they had to hold him up because he was just so drugged out on on heroin really, really bad. It was sad. And I just hate that some people got to go away and get it together. But I'm glad that, um, I hope, 
he could do the right thing because when you bring up the South, and I think about Mystico. Mm. Who's also locked up. Who got locked back up after everybody yeah. in the world was fighting for his release. Yeah, He wasn't even out a year. No, no, he was out for a little while. He was out in 2012. He got locked up again for a rape charge in 2017, but it was dismissed. And then in 2022, that's when he was arrested for the most recent rape right. charge. So he was actually out for 10 years. Okay, so okay, he was out for 10. Okay, yeah. all right. It seemed fast, didn't it? Hey, life, life moves fast. Man, life, that's life moves yeah, fast. That's so he was actually out. Yeah, he, he went back in, um, he paid a bond, and I think he was there. Okay, wait, so hold on. So okay, so he got locked up. He got locked. Okay, so so actually it's a little closer to what you're saying. So I'm I'm starting to see the whole story. Okay. So he got released in 2012. He got locked up again in 2017. He was there until 2019 when he posted a bond, and then 2020, everything was dismissed. Okay. So he did a little bit of time, but then in 2022, that's when he's back. Then in. he got back right. So it was like about a year. Year yeah, two. Yeah, two years, yeah. Yeah, about two. Yeah. Dummy. That hurt my because he was talented too. Super talented. I interviewed him while he was out. Wow. Right before he got locked up again. I'm sure people blame me for it, but I had nothing to do with no, no rape or nothing. This like. is crazy, man. Yeah. I <sighs> mean, it's uh you know, and I was just in New Orleans. New Orleans is great, man. Yeah, New, or too. New Orleans showed me so much love. Mm -hmm. I think more people stop me to talk to me and take pictures in New Orleans That's than I awesome. think any place I've been to. Yeah, I just stayed in the Ritz. Um, relax. Yeah, I was in the Four Seasons, yeah, chilling. I'm coming there. Yeah, I already know that's nice. <laughs> four Seasons, I fly. Know, when you said when you said Four Seasons, uh, in, yeah, in the New Grizzlies York, were there. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I will be at the matter of fact on my tour because I'm hitting New Orleans. Yeah, I'm making four sure seasons. I'm, I'm going you. to the Four Seasons. I got people there now. Okay, you know, good. I have a lot of fans there. Okay, you know, who good. worked there? So yeah, it, it was nice. It was nice, but you know, with BG coming out there was the whole snitching rumor right? that came out. I saw that. So according to 1090 Jake, what had happened was when he got arrested, they found a gun, and one of the guys in the car basically agreed to take the charge. Mm -hmm. Now, he took the charge, but what they're saying is is that BG ended up taking the stand against him mm. after the fact, and the guy didn't know that was going to happen. He just thought he was going to take the charge and plead out. He didn't think they were going to actually work against him. Right. With the whole situation, BG denied it and said, oh, you know, what's understood don't have to be explained. He even got chained with like a rat in a, in a coffin. Okay, I saw that. I didn't know what it was about because it had I the sound was down. A, it was almost a response to that. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, if someone takes the, if someone takes the charge for you, then technically they take everything that comes with it. I don't know, man. Like I don't I don't function in this world. Yeah, I I I'm I'm president of the homeowners association. <laughs> my life has changed. I'm I my way I think, the way I think, the way I move through life. As you get my age, you'll start seeing that some of this stuff is going to be beneath your intelligence. So shout out to BG, he's out. Um, whatever you had to do to get out, whatever your situation is, may you live with your decisions. Well, you know, in a new song with Finesse Two Times, BG actually dissed Lil Wayne, called him a bitch. I saw that. I saw, I, I, I saw him talk about it, but he said that he didn't. He has no beef with him. So he talked to him afterwards. Yeah, he said he's just he, doing it, and he wanted to put, get the tour, everybody back together, and go on this cash money tour. And yeah, I don't know if that's still happening. I don't know. I, I don't think you know these I mean, guys. Cause, you know, because Lil Wayne don't need a Cash Money tour. No, he doesn't. He doesn't need a Hot Boys reunion tour. No, Lil no, Wayne no. is fine. He's fine. Lil Wayne can get his hundred thousand a show. He's Lil Wayne is the icon in that group. Absolutely. You know, shout out to to Juvenile, definitely a legendary rapper, right, legendary, but not on Lil Wayne's level in two thousand twenty four. No, no, no. And Juvenile Turk, was yeah. Nowhere near right. Lil Wayne's level on right. any on any capacity, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, BG is not on a Lil Wayne right. level. Did and he sell any? Re any they, they they call it streaming now, right? Did he do any damage? Well, I mean, he has a a project with Gucci Man. Okay, so he didn't do that with Baby. No. Okay, I thought that came out with um. I thought Cash Money was put doing that. I don't. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Okay. I mean, you know, because 
because me and Birdman talk, and he was like, he was messing with BG and right. stuff like so that. So when he got out and I yeah, they're rocking with each thing. other. So I don't know. It seemed like they were trying to do something, but listen, at the end of the day. One thing, you know, my conversations with, with Baby is like you instantly get how much of a businessman he is. He's a businessman. You know, when I remember meeting him, we're talking. I remember he's like, yeah, you know, Playboy. Like, <laughs> That's how you talk. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he's like, the thing that I respect about you, Vlad, is that you flipped the game and you actually started paying for interviews and making profit off the investments. He's like, I, I never thought, you know, I've never seen anyone else do that before. Right, right. He's like, well, I respect how you really did yes. that. Like, th- th- that, that's impressive on a business mm-hmm. level. And I usually, me, me and Baby just connected right away. Okay, we're both business people. Right. We understand. Like, right. yeah, you got all the other shit, but at the end of the day, we're all here to make money. Absolutely. And with Baby, listen, if you're not, if you can't make money with BG, hey, on, on to the next project. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. You know? Yep, I agree. You know, I mean, look. Yeah, no hard feelings. Blue face. Was a viable artist, but he just got locked up. Right. How okay. many times is he doing? They're saying he's supposed to be out by the summer. Okay. It's like a probation bad. violation. Who just recently, he said that he loved it in there. Yeah, he said he loves it in here. It's cracking, it's active. Yeah, I don't know about all that. See, that's With a the, whole bunch of men. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, that's the thing that you had a young child that's listening to him. <laughs> you know, the, the jail's club. fun. Right. I used to think that until I went to jail. Because I've been listening to hip-hop my whole life. I never thought of that. But like I said, y'all, you no, got No, listen to jail. Look, listen to hip-hop. Listen to gangster rap. You think jail's not that bad. You think it's like a, a bonding with a lot of, lots of people you form lifetime, you know, friendships with. And it's it's a party. Hilarious. And you realize when you get there, you're around a bunch of people that you don't want to be around. That's true. That's true. And, eat, and you got to eat when they tell you to eat. Piss when they tell you to piss. You, yeah. Shower when they want you to shower. That's right. You can't. You can't do nothing. Can't do nothing. And and and, uh, and you know sometimes you don't even know if it's sunny outside. You don't. Nah, man, it's awful. It's awful. And uh, you know, and ultimately, I mean, probation violation. You kind of do do it to yourself a lot of times. You know, you're yeah. on probation. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember me and Boost were talking about this. He said when he was first, when he was young, he would be put on probation and. You know, they would tell him that he can't do a show and he'll do it anyways. And he'll right. tell the judge, I got to feed my family. And then he would violate. They would send him back to jail. And he's like, I was stupid. You know, now I follow everything the follow judge the tells rules. me to go. That's right. You can't just sit there and, and feel like, you know, you're going to convince whoever. Like, you know, these aren't your friends. That's right. <laughs> we got so much to learn, but that's why we got this, right? Yep. That's why we have this. We teach. You yep. better listen, though. Yep. You better listen. Uh, Dame Dash and Fat Joe were going at it recently. Mm, okay. You seen Let's this? I said it, yeah. So, and listen, me and Dame Dash don't get along. This is common knowledge. Okay, didn't know that. Yes. No, I didn't we know that. Okay. We don't get along. Okay. We don't get along. And, you know, even though Dame will say what he says about me, mm-hmm. and he likes to use the word chatty patty, me and him got into an argument over a phone call or over text, I think. And he decides to make a video out of it. Okay. So who's the chatty patty? Okay. You know what I'm saying? This could have been resolved just as two men. That's what, but he decides to make a, a public video about. out of it. Right. So then I, I, I did, so I'll start responding publicly as well. Right. You know, it is mm-hmm. what it is. So basically, Fat Joe did a video where he called Dame Dash delusional. He says some people hype themselves up to be something they're not. And if he's so such a big CEO and so talented business wise, then make another Jay Z. So Dame responded. He made his own video. Okay. And he said, "Why the fuck would I make another Hove? He was double dipping. We were paying him highly as an artist, and then he was double dipping from the company, and he didn't make me a lot of money." Mm-hmm. And he said that after he left Rockefeller, he made a hundred million dollars a year with Rachel Roy, the fashion company that was, right. which was his wife at the time. Um, I don't know. Here's the how thing. I, I, you, you could also gross a hundred million and, and not and not have a whole lot left over. I don't know the business of it. Whatever else. Here's my take on Damon Dash and uh, Fat Joe. I know them both very well. I like what Fat Joe has done with his career and how he's flipped the game and 
He's doing very well. He looks good. You see him out. He looks healthy. You can tell he's doing well. We just ate at um, Hillstones and um, Bell Harbor um, not too long ago. Um, Wonderful guy, Damon Dash, who I also um, feel is an amazing guy. I feel like he's an amazing man. I was there with the Jay-Z, I seen all of them, the way they moved, and how he um, he truly was ahead of his time. Damn, damn. He was ahead of his time creating businesses, starting to do. But my point that I'm making is sometimes you could be just a little too passionate. Sometimes you could be just a little over the top, and that can irritate people over time. Yeah, and it's like over time because some you can only deal with that type of level of energy he has. Yeah, Dame is irritating. Being around Dame is, is it un- can be un- irritating. He's so, unpleasant because, because he's so passionate and he doesn't. To me, Dame, this is my opinion, and I love you, and I know I'll see you. You have to learn to control that energy. You have to channel that energy such in a way that it doesn't irritate other people because it's good for maybe. 10 minutes, right? Maybe 12. Well, it, it works good when you have a Jay-Z in your corner. Yes. Right? I mean, whether you want to admit it, whether he wants to admit it or not, all of his success was based off this one man. Right. And once that man decided that he doesn't want to be part of right. this, this and, team and, anymore. And all, of, and all of them were together. And back then, if it wasn't no Damon Dance, it could be no Jay-Z. It was no Jay Z, could Possibly. be no Damon Dash. Yeah. They they all made it together. It's like well, and Biggs as well. Yeah, it's like Easy yeah. E not being part of NWA, right? It, it all worked together. It all they, worked they created together. magic together. Right, I, I got it. The thing, the thing that happened to them, to me, my opinion, Jay Z got tired. He moved on to do other things. It was like a growth, like I like being in a relationship. Baby, I love you. I just don't really see this going anywhere. Yeah, I'm gonna cut my ties now. And I'm going to go on about my business. And what I want people to see, I like that Damon Dash talks about Jay-Z once in a while. Oh, you talks about him all the time now. But every day now, yeah, it's just day. gotten yeah. a little, it's like being in a bad relationship and you know it's a bad one, but you're going to constantly keep repeating why my wife left me. Well, yeah, I mean, Dame likes to call everyone a culture vulture, including myself, but ultimately I feel that like he is the biggest culture vulture out there because his entire sustenance was from this one man yes was from jay and, he's still and when talking jay about got it. tired of having dame suck the life out of him dame has done nothing in a decade not a single great project not a single album not a single good movie not a single nothing and you know what on i'm top saying of that you never hear jay-z talk about and jay-z never responds never never responds and he but here's the worst part of it all because i remember dame did a whole interview where I was mentioned and he said that when he hears me talking about him he wants to smack the shit out of me and whatever else Mm -hmm. and I heard all this and I don't care about any of that right I don't give a shit about Dame Dash saying gonna slap me I don't you know I'm not worried about no Dame no Dame Dash but his words are slurring the entire time if you listen to Dame right now he either sounds sick or intoxicated okay I don't know which it is. Right. He's not that old. He's yeah. younger than you. Yeah, he's younger than me, for sure. I believe, hold on, let me see how old is Dave yeah. Dash. They all younger than me. I think I got 10 years on him. He's 52. He's two years I, older than me. Yeah. That's and he talks like, he's, like he's 30 years old. Right. Me. He's slurring his words. It's like he doesn't sound like he's all there anymore. And I hope that he gets some ch- help. I hope and that I he hope hears he gets help, Dame. Because honestly, Dame, whatever beef we got is not serious. Yes, it's not serious. Nobody got hurt. No one lost any money. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's some words back and forth. I don't care. Right. I don't care. If there's some business in the future we could possibly do together, if you become a slightly, you know, more respectful human being, it might actually happen. Because right. I remember when my man Sean Prez interviewed him, Dame went on this whole tirade about how relationships don't matter. Whoever got the best product on the block is going to sell the most. Fuck these relationships. They don't matter. Mm. And that's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. Because as you get up in the higher levels, it's all relationships. It's all relationships. The money doesn't matter. It's the relationship that's more important so than the money. You're so right. That's, when you're, that's maturity, though. Yeah. Because the reason why I say that, when I was coming up with NWA and I had like a bad rep in a sense, I didn't care what people thought about me. I didn't care. Yeah. 
But as you go through life, then you grow. When you grow, you know it's about being respected. And you got to take care of the important people yes. in your life and the people who have a certain degree of power that you're in circles with. You have to carefully maneuver those relationships. You have to nurture those yes, relationships. You, sure you have do. to go out of your way to not step on the toes of certain types of people because if someone is at a higher level than you and you rub them the wrong way, they have no reason to work it out with you. And you have a reason to work it out with them, but you won't even be able to have a conversation with that. them. that. People, some people don't forgive. Or it's not even a forgive thing. It's like, hey, listen, I don't... There's no, lots what of I mean people, is as time goes on, yeah. they remember what you did to they them. They remember what you did, and it's like, why would I Why would I spend the time working out with this person when honestly, I don't, I'm not interested in working with them anymore. Exactly. I've already seen who they are character-wise. Yeah. There's people who have better characters than them that I'd rather spend my time right, with. Right, right. And that's that. And maybe Dame will figure that out at some point, or maybe he won't. And here's the thing, whatever. Dave, whatever we do, I always wish you the best. I've known you from the Hard Knock Life Tour. We rock together. And um, I just truly wish, we wish everybody the best, don't we really? Yeah. When it comes down to it. Yeah. When me and you are here, we really, we want everybody, because we give out positive information. We're journalists. That's all we do. Well, look, I, 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 me and WAC, WAC 100 had a 10-year beef. We got into a big argument over the phone mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and he, you know, you know, I had made a mistake, you know, uh, or something I did, and he right. was upset about it. He, but he started talking reckless to me, and I'm like, well, if you're going to talk to me like that, we don't need to talk no more. Right. And for 10 years, we didn't talk. And then last, late last year, we got on the phone. Great. And we just laughed it off. Great. We said, you know, and, and what we, here, here's how I, I told him. This, this I is how that. I presented it to him. I said, whack. We could sit there and argue about this phone call from 10 years ago. And we could point the finger at each other mm -hmm. and say the mistakes that we both made. Mm -hmm. Or we could say we have made millions of dollars since this situation happened. And this situation had no bearings on our careers. None. And now we have some new business on the table. And why don't we focus on this instead of dealing with the bullshit? He said, right. you're absolutely right. Let's do the business. Mm -hmm. And then the interview, we talked about the bullshit. And then we we monetized it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's how we do it. Now me and him are cool. Right. That's I text him. He hits me back. Hey, you know, he's like, oh, you know, Blueface just got locked up. Can you post this? Yeah, I got you. Right. No problem. Oh, do an interview? Sure. He got me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not a big deal. I love it. Not a big deal. No one got hurt. Mm -hmm. No no money got lost. It's not that serious. Right. So to Dame, if you think you and I have a beef, there's no damn beef out there. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? But childish. honestly, you do sound messed up. So either sober up before these interviews, or if you're having some health issues, get that taken care of because mm -hmm. we're getting older. Yeah, we definitely, yep. Uh, we we about don't want to see, we don't, regardless of my issues, I don't want to see Dame check out in his 50s absolutely you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. he's got a new kid he's got other kids right people people care about him yeah you know what i'm do. saying we it do. is what it is well nba young boy who has 11 kids by nine baby mothers mm. say he's not really big on fatherhood hmm i read that you have how many kids i have seven seven mm -hmm. so you're four away from here yeah four away I did mine though over a forty year span. Oh, he he got his quick. Yeah, how old I did you mine? Mine, like mine is over a forty year span. How old I started late. I started at twenty seven. He is twenty four years old with eleven kids. He's twenty four. Twenty four. Wow. Twenty four. Here's my thing about children. I say every now and then. I love all my children. But I wish at the same time I wasn't I wasn't on that throw my dick tour. That's what I call it. <laughs> because you're so stretched out so you you're stretched out so thin mentally and spiritually. And then I teach people about sex and love. And I tell people that most people we have sex and we have children, and there's not a bond compared to if you love a woman and you loved her and you had a family and there's a bond. And I tell women all the time that if you have ever said your baby daddy ain't shit, you was easy to fuck.
So be careful what you say and know the difference between sex and love. And I, I could go deeper into it, but I just really want, you know, it's about knowledge, right? It's about knowledge, about 0% on the key to knowing how not to irritate a person to stay in business, to learn long enough to, if you um, live long enough that you can become friends with someone again and laugh about your past. Yeah. Right? It's, that's what life's about. And and if you live long enough, you see pain, you see happiness. Mm -hmm. Like you, this is what life brings. If you live, if you live to be 80, 90 years old, you will see almost everything life has to offer. Yeah. Well, you you had a tweet. You said if you if you remove sex from a relationship, you will discover that 90% of women have nothing to offer men in relationships. To some extent. Conversely, remove his money or success from a relationship, you will learn that 90% of women won't see a reason to be in said relationship. That's true. Because uh, a man is based on what he can provide. Bottom line, you are love based on what you can provide. If you can't provide, you're not a man. If you can't provide, you're not truly loved. I mean, it's, uh, it's deeper than that, but that's the topic we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the Kiki Palmer situation, you know, when you got a man who's trying to call shots in a relationship where he's not paying the bills. Dia Hughley said, if you want to do that, you're going to need a vagina. Absolutely. <laughs> and, the, and the world thinks different now, right? Back in our day, we, we met a woman, we sent them drinks, we take them shopping, mm -hmm. we, we give them money to get their hair done. We used to go for walks with them. We, like, we, 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 we took women out to dinner. I talked about this not too long ago. I talked about, um, I said, when you go to the guys, when you go out on the date with a girl, or you go to the club, you know, back in the day, what was the move? Like, you send, you send a bottle to the table. Yep. Ladies, what you're drinking? Mm -hmm. That's how it was. Yep. You go on a date with a young lady, you pull a chair out, you let her sit down first. Mm -hmm. You get on a plane with a woman. You always say, you give her the window. Unless she says, no, I got something wrong with my leg. Let me sit on the outside. I got people saying, yo, I paid for my ticket too. What if I want to look out the window? I don't get it, man. Yeah. So all I'm saying is the world has truly changed in front of us. And we got to get in where we fit in. We got to adapt. They got to we they got to listen to the old heads because we OGs. Mm -hmm. And hopefully some of them listen. But in actuality, Vlad, we wish these young kids the best. Mm -hmm. That's all you could do. Well, Diddy. Is in a whole different life right now. Yes, sir. Last time that we talked. Totally. Cassie filed a $30 million lawsuit. He settled it. Man, before she hung up the phone, that money was in her account. Yep. And the kind of things that came out in the paperwork of this lawsuit. Did you read the indictment? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean... They would have freak off parties where he would uh, basically make her have sex with men, yes. male prostitutes. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, she started dating Kid Cuddy, and Cuddy's car blew up. Right. And then there's the whole rape, assault, and stuff like that. Now, I remember I spoke to Roger Bonds, who was the security during that time. Mm -hmm. He ended up doing a, a an interview on uh, Danza uh, Project. Okay. I actually got offered the interview first, but I felt like it might potentially put me in lawsuit territory. Okay. Not to say that he wasn't telling the truth, but when it comes to this type of thing, as someone like a puffy, you got to be careful that Understood. everything could be verified and yeah. stuff like that. But what he basically said in the podcast and our conversation was that, you know, Cassie was abusive herself. Hmm. You know, like, He's been in the car with them where, like, they'd be driving. Cassie would just punch Puffy in the face. And wow. then he would jump in the back seat and they would start to tussle. And then she would get a black eye. And then she'd be in a hotel room for two weeks. And then it goes, it goes. You know what I mean? So, obviously, when a person files a lawsuit, they're going to put everything out there to make themselves look like the poor victim. And okay, this, it this makes monster, sense. Right. right. But ultimately, the fact that he settled this so quick... Um, 
you know, they're, uh, I guess he was not going to the Grammys, even though he's nominated. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like four other cases popped up yes. four other lawsuits. Um, Aaron Hall got mentioned in one of the lawsuits. I saw that. It's hilarious. So my interview started to kind right. of go viral again. Did you watch the interview with Aaron? Yeah, it's Wild hilarious. Out? I saw it. I saw it. I don't know why Aaron was bragging about men who watched him have right. sex with women. But right, that was hilarious. Diddy and, uh, Shout out to Aaron <laughs> Hall anyway. Chai, you know, I mm -hmm. guess Diddy and Jodeci watched him do his thing. Right. I don't know why that was mentioned, but... I mean, you know Puffy. I I've met Puffy. him before. I've interviewed yeah. him before. Do you think that over time all this will just be forgotten or do you think that he's just going to have to be low-key for the rest of his life? It's done. He's going to have to ride this out. It's too. He was too high up there. <laughs> and your reputation is everything. And he's a... Um, everything about him is about image. Yeah. He's an image guy. And, you know, and he was very successful with that. And I seen him come from nothing. You know, I see what he made of himself. And um, it's, it's, it's a sad situation. The great thing about it is I don't think he's going to do any jail time. No. I think he got no, no, enough no, money. No, 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 these are all civil suits. Yeah, and I think he got enough money to survive. So he'll live a decent life for the rest of his life. Um, he lost all his liquor company deals and all that. Yeah, all that's done. All that's done. He got kicked out of the school that he founded. Damn. Yeah, the charter school in Harlem, I think. Right. Where they basically distanced themselves. Even Revolt, he's no longer the chairman. Yeah. Um, so it's best to ride out. It is what it is. He's still a multi-millionaire, bi oh, close to a billionaire. So he's not broke. Definitely not broke. broke. He, if he stayed low key, he did his thing. He had a nice ride. Yeah. He's what, 55 or yeah, something? Yeah, he had a nice ride. He had a nice ride. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is. You know? He's 54. Thank you, 54. Yeah. I, like I said, when all of us started, I was 10, 8 years older than all of them. Yeah. So he had a nice ride. Yeah. He's going to live in his mansions. He's he got his, his kids. Mansions. You, you, you messed up. You know, he's got a new baby. The, yeah. You, you, know, you take it on the chin take like it a on man, the chin. pay everybody off. And going about your business. Yeah. And the great thing about this world we live in today, two years from now, nobody will care. I mean, listen, I think about how when Travis Scott, remember those people died at his concert, and then like the album was yep. shelved and the Nike deal was put on hold. Now he's the biggest artist in the world again. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Sneaker he's, comes out, album came out, a huge hit. Songs are still on rotation. So his album went out. He get, he, yeah, Utopia came out. Nobody cares. Man, nobody cares. Yeah, cause, I mean, I, you know, you know how I feel about these situations. The way I feel about these situations is when it happens, all the people that already don't like you jump on the bandwagon and make so it true. look and make it look like it's bigger than it right, already it's true. is. I mean, they did the puff when he came. When he came oh, yeah. out, everybody. And I, that's what that's the only thing that made me mad. Because I was like, yo, a week ago, yo, was really rocking. Puff showed up, y'all be all on them and blah, right. blah, blah. If you don't like someone, don't like someone all the time. Right. If you got a, 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 a something on someone, yeah. don't just say it because you see somebody else saying yeah, it. Look, I mean, like, like I'm going through this whole viral moment right now, my Taraji P. Henson comments. Right. And I see all the comments, you know, like the, the thousands of replies. Oh, need to cancel Vlad. Fuck this guy, you know, whatever. But when I look at the people who are saying it, you could tell these weren't Vlad TV fans to begin with. Right. A lot, a lot of them are women. Yeah. Oh, we already. And know. you know, and I have a ninety percent male audience. Right. So, so the, literally ninety percent of the comments are coming from women. Yes. And the the ones that are coming from men, when you look at their profiles, I'm like, okay, this person wasn't rocking with me to begin <laughs> with. This right. person, you could find other shit about me in their profile. Right, right. So it's like, okay. So now you have another reason not to like me, but everyone that rocks with me can see through the logic of what I'm saying. And that's what we want. We want people to have and that's, logic. And that's fine. Right. I stand behind what I said. Right. Taraji, and, go and build your own shit. You can do it. And I can vouch for you. Yeah. We. It's a positive thing that you're saying. Yeah. It's not a negative thing. I'm not saying you should accept lower wages. No. 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 There are other ways to make money where you can get everything that you deserve. You gotta be a hustler and get it for yourself. You ain't gotta ask yes. for no help. And you're getting older, Taraji, and these roles that, you know, 
as you get older, yes, in Hollywood, there are still roles, but there's always more roles when you're younger. Absolutely. When you're younger, you could also look older. But and when you're older, that, you can't go the other direction. If you put her in the right position, you become a boss. You go out and find younger talent. You find to do other things. Exactly. That's it. You got to have it. But here's the thing. You got to have it in you. Yeah. If it ain't in you, you can't force it out of nobody. No. It not not everyone. Not you. everyone is going to be a hustler. No, everybody's not going to be. You a know hustler. what I'm saying? A lot of people say college is a waste of time. Don't mm -hmm. go to college. And usually, people are saying that either went to college or didn't go to college, but they didn't turn out all that good in life. Absolutely. You never hear any doctors saying don't go to college. <laughs> you don't see anyone from Harvard bashing college. Right. That's true. You know, I know no one from MIT is saying it's a waste of time. Right. The people who took it seriously and ended up with great careers. Right. Like myself, yes. and, and, and it took me a while to pivot mm -hmm. and, 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 and understand. I'm still, yep, I agree. I understand, like my my Berkeley computer science degree is still used on an everyday basis. Right. You know, I'm saying not, I'm not a programmer anymore, but college was important. It was an important right. part of my life. I would never tell anyone not to go to college. Right. But at the end of the day, man, listen, everyone's gonna have their opinion. Everyone's gonna bash you, and two or three days later, no one's gonna give a shit. You know, I lean into the stuff now. I used to, oh no, now it's like, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you want to post this viral tweet right. about me? I'll I'll reply to it and say, here's the full video on YouTube. Right. Go watch it. In less than two weeks. No one will remember. No one will not remember. They won't care. They won't care. They will not care. Well, you know, Kanye issued an apology to the Jewish community. I saw that. But, but what did he do? Well, it was over all the anti-Semitic stuff that he oh, had Oh, from before? Yeah. I thought when he did that, something nah, new had nah, happened. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, this, was, okay. this was based on all the stuff, okay, okay, all the bullshit okay, he good, did I'm before. glad you said that, because I didn't know. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. he do something no, he did it, and he wrote in Hebrew, so everyone had to translate it and whatever else. <laughs> and he's got a new album coming out, which seems to be kind of anticipated. I mean, not at the usual Kanye level, but it seems like people are looking forward to it. I uh, it heard a little back. bit of it. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, it's Kanye. Yeah. You're not taking his talent away. Do you think that Kanye can get back to where he was? Or do Absolutely. You think, really? Yeah, I think he can get back to Because he's like a Cat Williams. He's in his own lane. He's very unique and different. And his music. See, he could drop. He could sell five, six. I don't know if they do that anymore. What is five, six million records today? You yeah, know? I mean, uh, the streaming equivalent of it. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. could do that. Go on tour, keep rocking the fans. Because again, what did we just say? People, okay. And it's not sexual. It's not sexual. No. It's different it's categories, right? Well, I mean, if you talk about religion. You get canceled when you go to jail. Yeah. You No, what I'm saying is sexual assault, you're done. Sexual assault. So you're saying no one has been accused of sexual people, assault? People, people who, uh, in this era, People get accused of sexual assault. Wait, 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 okay, okay. wait, wait. Look at R. Kelly. He done. Well, now he's done. But remember, after he beat his first trial, and in fact, leading up to that trial, that everyone knew he was guilty on, because, you know, the tapes were circulating. No and, one and cared. He dropped his biggest records during that era. He did. No one cared. You heard... It's like Keefe. You put out so much bullshit be out there about you, sooner or later someone's going to bite. Now, with R. Kelly, the, the saddest thing about R. Kelly, and I tore on pretty much all his tours, that he didn't know when to stop, which is everybody's good. Even though a sex is called greed, the American greed. When you know that you've done wrong, eventually you got to say, you know what? I got away with this shit too yeah. long. Because you can get away with it. You can get away with it. Yeah, people think, here's my theory. Everyone that gets through something bad and they're religious and they say that God got me, I can tell you that God called me yesterday and said that he wasn't helping any of those people out. Mm -hmm. It was just the law of averages. Right. I believe you. You will get away with shit. That's right. You know, if you rob a, rob a house, there's a pretty good chance the first three, four times you will get away with it. That's so true. God's not looking out for you. Right. You just got lucky. You got lucky. But every time you do it, you are statistically closer to getting caught. Absolutely. Every time. Yeah. It's just like rolling a dice. Yep. You're not going to hit snake eyes the first time. Right. But if you keep rolling, you will eventually hit that snake You're eyes. You're right. You're right. And if you keep doing it over and over again, yes, you could think it's God. Yes, you could think <laughs> someone's looking out for you. No. 
you could get away with a lot of shit and then you could stop before you get caught and never have to pay the and price. Ride into the sunset. I totally There's been agree lots with of you. shit that I've done that I know was wrong and I just got away with it yep. because like you said, I stopped. Got to stop. And I will never, you know what I mean? I bought a kilo of cocaine back in the day. I'll never, right. I'm never, you know, it's past the statute of limitations. Right. I'm never going to have to pay the price for that. And you I know, just legally. Do, right. And you just, it seems courted when we're young, but you just want to do right in life, man. Yeah. To go home to your own bed. Right. You understand? Have a woman. Yes. <laughs> as opposed to a man. Right. <laughs> cuddling with you. Nice sheets. <laughs> Nice refrigerator. See, I, I think though with Kanye, and you know, I agree with you. He can put out an album and the fans will stream it. He can go on a tour and the fans will show up. And then eventually you start forgetting and then the but, people but, start coming back. But I think that what he's done though is that he's prevented himself from doing major deals with major corporations. Oh yeah, Again. that's definite. But they will I feel, forget. I, Nah, I don't think so. Let me explain to you why. Just my opinion. Okay. If you start doing the big tours and you're doing big numbers, people sometimes turn the other cheek when you're doing big numbers. Now, the only thing against him, it, it, not against, but this will depend on how big does his records go and how long can he keep dropping album after album that he's doing good. And then it comes back to what we said about Taraji. Who's representing you because... If you have a relationship with someone, you say, yo, let's take care of my boy this time. Yeah, I mean, possibly. You know, I it's mean, a, it's a long shot. You know, look, like the, the Adidas deal is a wrap. Yeah, it's a long Nike's shot. Nike's not going to take him on, right. but, but there might be a shoemaker that says, you know something, do a couple more apologies and we'll say that you've Somebody turned the other cheek right. and, you know, we'll put some money behind right. you. Yeah, you're right. Because I saw this last thing that he put together with the sock. That shoe sock? Yeah, I don't know about that. That shit. I'm not gonna wear that, and I like he. I'm gonna use these right now. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not. I'm not wearing the. the, the and again, shoes. what I have noticed in my lifetime, Puffy should have stayed quiet, even though he had sexual assault because he was trying to sue the liquor company. Yeah, because he said he wasn't promoting it, but they say he only put a thousand dollars in or whatever. I would have shut up on that and just roll that out because it was easy money. Kanye, to me, I felt like. He could have stayed quiet, kept getting that, kept, kept getting the money, and took that money and did more for the community the way he said. You could create your own community, create your own school. Yeah, he's been saying that forever. I mean, he had a school. Yeah, he had a school. It, it and I heard down. that, yeah, yeah I heard it he was, wasn't paying it was, nobody. It was a mess, and, yeah. It was a mess. Well, the, the thing about Kanye is that everyone in life has a, has a role and a skill. Right. Yeah. Like for example, I've been dealing with Tony Yeo now for a while. Mm -hmm. Tony Yeo's superpower is his loyalty. Yes. I've I've seen it now. Yeah. Being around him, hang out with him, on and off camera. Mm -hmm. If Tony, if you do right by Tony, you take care of him, and and you do everything you say right. you're gonna do, and right. it all comes together. Tony will rock with you forever. Right. You know, if you have enemies out there, he's going to let you know who's talking behind your back. Mm -hmm. He's not going to, you know what I'm saying? He's right. not going to snake you. He will, he's not going to like, you know, try to play both sides. Mm -hmm. you, you've seen him. He he just got off tour with 50. Right. He's the only original G-Unit member. That's true. To still be rocking with 50 Cent. Right. And he just got off a hundred city tour. Right. Right. In 24 countries. Mm -hmm. Young Buck's not there. Lloyd Banks, who was around early on, is mm -hmm, not there. Right. Game is not there. Mm -hmm. And then all the other, the Livias and the other G-Unit right, members so are, are not around anymore. But Tony is right there sure with him because that's a superpower. So when you look at Tony, when I deal with Tony, I say, okay, I know that this is what he's really good at and I'm going to, you know I'm saying? Utilize this in terms of having a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. But not everyone is like this. No. You know what I'm saying? Other people have different skill sets. Kanye is good at ideas, but he's not the follow-through guy. Absolutely. He needs a something team. behind him, right. a group of experienced people, 
You know, he couldn't put out his own clothes or his own shoes. He no. needed Adidas right. to do it. Right. It's true. Yes, he wants to build this whole Wyoming thing, whatever. Now it's just abandoned. It's like no one's even living there right, anymore. Right, I heard about that too. Bought a $30 million house in Malibu to turn it into some sort of bunker, and then he just gave up at one point. Right. And now it's up for sale. Like, like it's just a lot of, you see these ideas with him that just fall by the wayside. That's so true. And hundreds of millions of dollars. Wasted. Wasted. Because mm -hmm. he's just the idea guy. And right. when he goes on to a different idea, there's no one there to pick up the pieces. I totally agree with that's you. That's why I think Kanye's like. And that's sad. It's like, what can you accomplish? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Yep. Um, Boosie went to go see The Color Purple with his <laughs> daughter, and he walked out during the gay scene because mm -hmm. there's a lesbian scene. Did you watch the movie? I saw the movie. I saw the original and this one. Okay. I haven't. I saw the original a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched the new one. Right. How, how was the movie, by the way? The movie is good. I yeah. enjoyed the movie. Okay. I have to lie. Again, it's based on where you are in your life and your how you see things in life. Mm -hmm. Are you strong enough to see certain things? I, I know the scene that he's talking about where the two women were kissing, but they wasn't in bed, and it implied that they woke up in bed the next morning that they slept together. Yeah. Was it something to truly get upset about and say this is homophobic? Me, personally, no. Well, he had his kid with him. Yeah, he has, and that's different. You got your child with you. Yes, my, I, I think had my it was a, she was a nine year old or something. Yeah, that's different. Yep, nine years old. But then again, you probably should be taking a nine year old to a PG. Like, what what, what rating is the? Color I have no like? idea. Hold my on. daughter went with me. She was twenty, so my daughter's twenty. It's different. It's a PG thirteen. Okay, so you technically have someone there who's a little bit younger than they should be. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't have took a nine year old to that movie. Yeah, that's for not for. Uh, and, and the reason why I wouldn't do it, because I believe Hollywood sends subliminal messages to us to make sure that we still are slaves, mm. that we still come from that. Because those are the most movies that get greenlit in Hollywood. If you look over the history of movies, it's either gang violence movies or slave movies that get greenlit the most. So when they do those movies, I think that we all go see it. And we all walk out of that mug mad because of what happened. But what they did to this movie, they flipped it. It was more a musical. It oh. A, yeah, it's a musical. They sang the lot. Oh. Guarantee you'll like it. All right. I'm going to watch it. It's a musical. I, mean, I like the original. Yeah. This is way better than that bitch. Really? Oh. Not okay. Even, it's night and day. This is a musical. Yeah, I mean, listen, Boosie's going to be Boosie. Yeah, and Boosie's and, uh, from a different uh, era. Yeah, Boosie's from a different era. Yeah, he's and he stands era. on what he stands on. Yeah. And, and, you know, his oldest daughter is gay. Yeah, yeah. And I also, know he's going to have to deal with the, you know, right. the he dichotomy has his own issues. of it all. And, you yeah. know, and, and that's cool. That's cool. He has his own issues. We, you know, listen, we Boosie has a gay manager. Like, he's with him, like, most times. Right, when I see right. Him. Like, Bo Boosie's not, is not homophobic. Like, he doesn't hate gay people. Right. He's not anti-gay. He mm -hmm. doesn't want bad things to happen to gay people. But, you know, he has his feelings about how he feels. And, and he you got to respect behind that. Him, and he's not going to bend or, you know, compromise. And But that doesn't mean that there's animosity towards a group of people. No, he's just... He's just he's... I have gay employees. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's all it's all to the good. We, right. we talk about, you know, if I have a, a question about the gay community, I'll go to them and I'll just kind of like pick their brain a little bit. And right. Say, hey, you know, how, you know what's... What I don't they... even think they know some damn time. I think they make it up as they go along <laughs> through. They ain't nobody got time for this shit. <laughs> they come up with a new law every day. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they so true. You know, uh, Trump actually posted my Sammy the Bull interview. I, oh, that yeah, I, and yeah. Some believe it or not, someone sent that to me. Yeah, before you did, but I saw it, and how he was really trying to get Trump. Well, they, they tried to get him. Well, so so what had happened was Steve Wynn was trying to stop Trump from opening a casino in Vegas. Mm. So he sent a couple of these FBI agent security guys to try to get Sammy to lie about Trump's mob connections to try to get him from not opening his wow. casino. And it was actually kind of a funny exchange right. because Sammy was like, he wasn't saying, so that. you want me to lie? They're like, well, no, no, we're not saying that. He's like, okay, well, I I'll lie. How much is Steve going to pay me for this? He's like, well, he'll just be very appreciative. He's like, I'm not, listen, I'm not going to lie for appreciation. Right, right. You want me to lie? Tell me what I'm going to get up for lying and right. I'll lie. Mm -hmm. But you know, if I, but I'm telling you, Trump, 
wasn't, you know, we try to press on them. Like they try to basically push up on Trump, but Trump was surrounded by like CIA guys and they're like, there's no way we're going to be able to pull this okay. off. So they just left him alone. Right. But Trump actually posted that on his inst- official Instagram, which is interesting because now Vlad TV is kind of officially connected to a president. Absolutely. To a presidential story. Right. Not in a major sense. Right. Not in a major sense. It all sense, counts. But it's all, it's all a little bit. It's not one thing that makes you. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is something I wasn't expecting. Right, but, it's but to have someone with like 26 million followers post your video, right, is like, and you hear my voice, it's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> I guess, Interesting. I guess Love what it. I'm doing. Love it. You know, listen, I, I've never been a big Trump fan. Mm-hmm. Um, he just won the Iowa. Uh, that I woke up the next caucus, morning and like, saw that as oh, wow, by a huge margin. Huge. Yeah. I, 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 it he's seems like he's a shoe man. in. He's a shoe in for the Republican. The only way they can knock him out is if, uh, the whole like, um, the Rico case goes through. If they can convict him on treason mm-hmm. on any level, then then he's barred from running for any office okay. for the rest of his life. And I think it, the election's in November. Yeah, it's coming up. That's like in three weeks, <laughs> right? And and a couple <laughs> of states have actually blocked him from running already but that's the supreme court is actually going to look at that right so supreme- november is around uh, you, you may think november is long no, november is right november is around thanksgiving is like tomorrow yeah that's how fast this goes yeah yeah i don't know man um i mean i voted for biden but biden just even though he's a similar age to trump he's a different type of old he's a different type of old yeah he's because they're not that much d- yeah they're, they're age. similar age but yeah. but but yeah, I mean, Biden just looks like a walking corpse. He sure does. He looked like he's already deceased. Yeah, he does. Like he's got when like he gets a, to the podium, foot and a half in the grave. He, when he when he gets to the podium, he even flips. I was like, no, don't do it here. Yeah. He no, shakes people's hand who's aren't there, and like, yeah. He, it's yeah, it's a mess. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's a difference. I, I don't know, but at the end of the day, yeah, seeing my interview on Trump's Instagram was definitely like, my yeah, yeah, all right, okay. Because I'm someone has sent it to me before you sent it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, that is so cool. And then you sent it. And I was like, yes. yes. So that was good. Yes. Yeah, you everywhere, man. Hey, man, listen. This is a lot of people approach me and said, hey, I want to start a podcast. I want to get into this field that you're in. And what I tell them is it's consistency. Mm-hmm. For 15, this is now my 16th year in business. Right. We have been putting out content 365 days a year. You know what I'm saying? The only time we ever stopped at one point, our, our you know, last year, our YouTube had to be transitioned into a different uh, company. So right. for seven days, we were down. So we didn't upload those days. But other than that, we were uploading. And I've been with you since every day. how long? You've been here 16? Well, let's look up the oldest TK Kirkland. Yeah. Right? I could tell you exactly when it was. I Hold on know. a second. Our first interview was 2016, January of 2016. Wow. Yeah. Seven years. Yep. Yeah. I remember I told that story on stage. I talked about, I did the Breakfast Club. Eight years now. This is coming up on eight. It's eight, eight years. years. Yep. Eight years now. Matter of fact, January. Yeah, it's actually eight yeah, years. Eight years. Eight you, years. Um, yeah, eight years. Eight years. And um, before I got to the elevator, he had called me. And he said, TK, some young lady called. And she said, um, Blad, I didn't know who he was. They said, Blad wants you to do this interview. I was like, you sure. I and mean, the rest is history. And we've been rolling ever since. And, you know, and a lot of people, like, this is just a word of advice to people who are coming up mm-hmm. when they do interviews. When every interview that someone does is a financial investment. Right. Right? Yep. You know, even if you're not paying the person being interviewed, you're paying for the camera people, mm-hmm. you're paying for the studio, you're paying for the time, mm-hmm. and so forth. So every company that does an interview, they, they they wanted to get a lot of views because they want to get their investment back. Right. Right. But and break oftentimes, it, break down to the people because people do podcasts. Well, yeah, well and I'm, I'm going to break it down okay, here, cool, right? Cool, cool. And oftentimes, when we, because we get approached for interview requests every day, right? Dozens of requests every single day. Um, and oftentimes, we'll look at the person, we'll research it. And what we usually do first, and this goes for pretty much everyone, 
is they'll look, so let's say YouTube is the, is the platform that we use, we'll look at other YouTube interviews that person has done. Okay. And if we see that most of the other interviews have flopped, then we're gonna pass. Okay. But you don't think your show could be the show to launch it? It could be, but then you're taking the extra risk. Okay. Right? Okay. It's a lot easier to say, hey, listen, this Come person- Come to the first. This person already did a million views over here mm -hmm. on a similar, if they did a million views on No Jumper, I'm more likely to bring them on Vlad TV okay. and vice versa. Right. So my whole thing is, is that when you decide to do interviews, especially your early interviews, make sure you pick the right platforms. Okay. It might not be the biggest platform, it's just the platform that's most compatible with who your audience is okay. and how the person interviews. Because if you go and do a bunch of interviews and they all flop, that might be the end of your career. You got it. In terms of the interview part. Right. Which is a part of your overall fan base. Yes. So just choose wisely. Okay. Don't just take anything just because someone calls you and maybe offers you a few dollars. Choose wisely because on the flip side, you know, like you look at, for example, a Mob James, our first interview got like three, three million views. And that turned into a whole podcast career for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, uh, Scarlip, after our interview, she got a multi million dollar deal. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it's. I'm the reason she got the deal, but right. I'm sure they looked at those numbers and said, oh, okay, right. not only did she have decent music streaming numbers, but look, she did Vlad and it right. got like 2 million views. Okay, we're more confident mm -hmm. in cutting this check. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of comes into the equation. Right, and it goes back to, um, one, a lot of people do podcasts, but don't know how to monetize it. Right. A lot of people just say they got a podcast, yeah. but they're not looking how to make money. Yeah. And if you do this business right, it's a big check. You got to know how to get your numbers up and then try to get sponsorship. Now, here's what I do on my podcast. On my podcast, you know, I have, I have no video. Just audio. Just audio. Okay. But I have people who pay me to mention their product on my shows. Mm. Yeah, we're actually, uh, I'm working with my man, Sean Press on this. I think this year is the first year we start doing sponsorships and stuff like that. You never did sponsorships? Never did sponsorships, man. Wow. Never, You never. about to go to a whole nother level well, now. Well, just because I felt like, you know something, I feel like like the the con you know the content, I just try to keep it as pure as possible okay. without the extra stuff distracting people. From right, it. But right. But ultimately, even Mr. Beast has sponsorships. So, right, you know, right, even right, ESPN right. has sponsorships. I like that, I'm gonna bring you some sponsors then. All right. Yeah, you know, I'm a businessman. Everyone out there, you know, if you want to sponsor a future Vlad TV interview, hit up oh, uh, you have no idea what hit up just info did. at VladTV.com. Listen to me, people. He just gave you a gift of a lifetime. <laughs> and I hope that you are smart enough to capitalize on it. Vlad, I hope you know, I hope they understand what you just did. Yep. I hope. Hey, man. Vlad, listen. listen up before we go. Listen. <laughs> you just made some people rich. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You just made some people rich <laughs> with this opportunity. Hey, man. I made a lot of people rich. Yes. People don't talk about that, but I, I've put a lot of money in a lot of people's man, pockets. Man, this is a great. That's great. Uh, I, I've set off a lot of people's careers. There's been a lot of people who uh, based their businesses on mine and have done extremely well. Yeah, I've been very, very supportive of them right. as well. Yeah, you I'm have, not, you I'm have. not we a hater. About it. Uh, I, I bring these people on. I've formed you know, friendships and business relationships with these people. Man, I want everyone to win. And I feel like everyone, um, we all could win together. Me and Nori, we squashed our little dumb beef right. recently. You'll see me on Drink Champs pretty soon. Okay, good, good, good. You know good. what I'm saying? Um, you know, everyone... I want everyone to win. I want everyone to do well. Right. And there's plenty of room for all of us. There's plenty of room for everybody, yep. man. So true. That's true. So That's true. how we're going to end it. TK Kirkland. Always a pleasure. Happy New Year, baby. Happy New Year. Peace.